Welcome back to HDNet Bites Dream New Year 2011. Welcome back to the beautiful city of Tokyo by night with the dazzling fairy lights. It is such a gorgeous place to be. Always something to see. Always something to do. That's right near our hotel, the beautiful love zone, downtown Shinjuku. Some of the local fare. Octopus bars. Octopus balls they are. I'll pass on one of those. Stick with our link balls we've got on our table here. 25,000 strong of the Saitama Super Arena. And it's time to move to our next rule set. I'm sure Antonio Inoki will be out here soon because we are moving into part of the pro wrestling portion of tonight's car. Japanese pro wrestling. The theatrics are very much less than those in American pro wrestling. Many of the matches are treated as legitimate fights, even though they are scripted. The range of techniques used is very heavy on martial arts strikes and submission holds. Japanese pro wrestling really began with the sport's first big star, Rikidozan, in 1951. With his Japanese Wrestling Association, Ricky Dozan competed against the great Lou Fez several times there. 1957 match, which ended in a 60-minute draw, drew an astronomical television rating of 87. Teki Suzuki, who has wrestled for the IGF 11 times before. He's faced the likes of Shinichi Suzukawa, Peter Ertz, and Mark Coleman, amongst others. Before becoming a pro wrestler, he trained in judo and played soccer. Known as a very technical wrestler. Shinichi 
been a fan of Josh Barnett since before he became a pro wrestler. Mike Barnett is a catcher's catch can wrestler. Suzuki has said he'll use techniques he learned directly from Billy Robinson that Barnett has never seen. Into the ring. Hideki Suzuki. Billy Robinson, who of course trained Kazushi Sakuraba in the art of catch wrestling. I'm just going to move my seat over a little bit, Mike, because Josh Barnett cuts quite an imposing and scary figure as he struts his way to the ring. Barnett, the baby-faced assassin, the war master, a 31 and 5 mixed martial arts record, the former UFC heavyweight champion, the former openweight king of Pancrase, has over 60 matches wrestling here in Japan. A catch wrestler. A black belt in BJJ under Eric Paulson. They love him here in Japan. And you know that Barnett loves wrestling for the Japanese fans. The first of our wrestling fights on tonight's card. Suzuki, the first to emerge from his corner. Barnett peels off his T-shirt, and we are ready to get this one on. Final inspection from our center referee. Can Suzuki outstrength Josh Barnett? What has Barnett got in his bag of tricks for Hudeki Suzuki? Barnett actually has the higher experience in pro wrestling than does Suzuki. And look at the stare down there from Barnett. He is ready to go. Suzuki remaining calm, but it's got to unnerve you a little to stare into the eyes here. The shark-like eyes of Josh Barnett. Anything can happen here. Barnett just flexing off the ropes, bouncing around a lot, and here we go. Suzuki rolling somersault to start. Barnett gets out of the way. And Suzuki goes for a low sweep. You've got to be quick. Barnett always been a quick heavyweight. High left round kick from Barnett. Looks for a side kick here, perhaps. No. Shoots down for a single leg Suzuki. Barnett locks up the shoulder early on. Locks up the forearm. Tries to tie up the leg now. Looking for an early submission, Barnett. And Suzuki gives him a slap. No striking with a close fist, of course. Barnett locking up that right leg. Suzuki into a wheelbarrow position here. Barnett dragging the leg. Suzuki rolls out, takes Barnett's leg. Nice exchanges early on here. Locking up the ankle, Josh Barnett. And Suzuki trying for a submission off that right leg at an awkward angle. 
Looking to scissor up the neck momentarily, Barnett. The tremendous strength of the former UFC champion. And he looks for a submission on the left. The extension on that Achilles here. Can Suzuki get out of trouble? And he does. Takes the back here of Barnett. He looks for a submission, looks for a choke. Barnett back in the genuflect position, now back on both feet. And Barnett drags him down. Still Suzuki though, controlling the head. Barnett tucking the chin, pops the head out, chicken wing behind the back. Nice work here from Barnett, very slick early on. Posting up on one arm is Suzuki. Just straining the shoulder here, you can see the grimace of pain in the face of Hideki Suzuki. Barnett applies the pressure. And Suzuki kicks out and manages to get to the ropes. Barnett forced to break the move. Holding that shoulder is Suzuki. Barnett already inflicting the punishment on the left arm, on the left shoulder. Greco Roman knuckle lock here. No. Underhooks takes the back, does Suzuki. Can he get a suplex on here? Wrist control from Barnett. Barnett switches around, takes the back. Nice reversal from Suzuki. Barnett hooks the legs, preventing a suplex. Abdominal stretch here from Suzuki. No. They go to canvas. Modified crucifix position here. Takes out the arm, does Barnett. Pins the leg. Barnett's going to go to work now on that left foot, on that Achilles, on the heel. Grabbing a handful of face, and Barnett slaps him. Not once, not twice. Short forearms from Barnett. Old body shots from Barnett. Meat hooks to the meat section. Oh, and he's just going back to tenderizing that ankle. Twisting and turning his Barnett. Solid work from Barnett so far, Mike. Yeah, I mean, wow, I've never seen a pro wrestling match here in Japan. This is phenomenal, man. I mean, this, these giant guys are flipping over, and here's Suzuki going for an arm bar. Can he get it here, the arm bar? Hideki Suzuki, Barnett holding on that vice like grip. No, Barnett got his got his elbow out, so it's going to be very, very difficult to do. But Suzuki took some really, really painful leg locks and didn't tap out of them. It was amazing. I don't know, can you tap out here? Can you tap out? Barnett, does Barnett get to the ropes, though? And the referee says to Barnett, you have to break. And break he does. Back to centering. The crowd are loving this one, as are we. Barnett has been working hard. His face is burning bright red like a tomato. And Suzuki resets himself. Oh, slap. Just behind the ear, and Barnett snorts out a huge gob. Goes for a high left round kick. Outside thigh kick. And Suzuki tells him to bring it on. You don't want to call forward, Josh Barnett. You may as well wave a red curtain in front of a charging bull. All fours now for Suzuki. Barnett front face lock. Up into the genuflect position is Suzuki. Oh, he's neck cranking him right there. I mean, that's very, very painful. He's neck cranking him. Drops down again to one knee. Now Barnett puts him on his back inside control. Going to work on that right arm. And here comes the head and arm choke from Barnett. No scissor choke from Suzuki. Can Barnett pry it free? The legs are hooked up momentarily. This is not a position you ever want to be in. Oh, and Barnett rolls out. Backward somersault. Front face lock now. This is a good spell from Suzuki. Oh, beautiful suplex from Suzuki. And he lands on the back of his head, Barnett. Suzuki takes the back. He's going to try and choke him out now. Look at the pain on the face of Josh Barnett. He's saying to the referee, I'm OK. And Suzuki squeezing like an anaconda that arm wrapped around the neck of Josh Barnett. Barnett looking for something. He just cracks on the left ankle. And now Suzuki incurs the pain. Barnett going to work on that left ankle. Look at the strain oh, on the face of Suzuki. That's going to break. I mean, that has got to be a painful. I don't know how Suzuki is surviving this footlock. I mean, Barnett is really putting on some footlocks. He just stumped him in the face. Barnett drags him back to center ring. Puts on a sharpshooter. And Suzuki says, no, I'm not done yet. Barnett just hyperextending that knee. 
all the pressure, the knee, the hamstring, on the shin, top of the ankle. And look at this position from oh my Barnett. God, with a neck crank. Yeah, he's doing a face, face lock neck crank and a foot lock at the same time. I don't know how Suzuki is surviving this. This is Barnett. Oh, he's trying to touch the rope. Game and Suzuki cleverly gets the ropes. Barnett forced to break the technique. Barnett stumbles back against the ropes. This high work rate has taken it out of the American. Suzuki looking for a kick here, perhaps. And he does to the outside thigh. Nice work from Suzuki. Barnett returns the favor and drops him. Oh, foot to face. Ground kick, knee, and a barrage of strikes from Josh Barnett. Oh, beautifully done from Barnett. Ends up with that arm all locked up. What can Barnett do from here? I mean, he had a chicken wing in there, but obviously Suzuki was very, uh, very skilled and escaped out of it. He's now trying an arm lock of his own, and back to the feet, Barnett goes. Barnett goes back I mean, to the ankle. Those locks, those ankle locks are painful, Mike. It's just painful to watch. Look at the hyperextension on the ankle here. And with the shoes on, you know, it just makes it so much, so much easier to do, so much harder to slip out of it. What's interesting here, guys, is that these guys can win by pin, too, but it's th neither of them seems particularly interested in going for that. They're just trying to, to wrench each other's joints out of sockets. Well, they're just so active, you know, it's just, it's really difficult to pin them down because neither one of them really stay in one position long enough. They're always looking for escapes, and, and Barnett has a pretty solid arm bar here. He lets go of the leg. He can hook up the arm bar on the left arm of Suzuki. It's really easy here to see the pro wrestling roots of MMA in Japan, incidentally, watching this. There's a, there's a whole lot of crossover in the techniques used. Suzuki is going to try and lift the big man over his head. No. Barnett just lucky. Here he goes. And Barnett on his back. Rolls him over. Can Barnett get the pin now? Only a two count. Suzuki kicks out. That was a great reversal by Barnett. Barnett straight back on top of him. Back to that. Front headlock. Yes. <laughs> Hear the heavy breathing of Hideki Suzuki. The referee calls break. A very slow break there from Suzuki. Oh, double drop kick. Nicely done from Suzuki. Gut munching kick though from Barnett. Forearm across the face. And another one. Beautiful elbow to the chin from Suzuki. Oh man, he's showering sweat, sweat all over it. <laughs> and Thompson has got his sweat serving. Barnett drops down onto both knees. Takes the back. Nicely done from the American. Oh, nice sit out. He's trying to throw a suplex, but Suzuki was very masterful in defending it. Tried for a rolling arm lock, and Barnett gets an arm lock of his own. A ball being submission attempt so far. Only one pin attempt in the fight. That was by Barnett. Oh, that's a bicep guys. slicer. Oh, that is painful. Barnett is putting some really painful moves. I mean, these are some, this is some dirty grappling here. I mean, that is so painful. You know, he's, your forearm literally crushes oh, your bicep. Barnett, now caught in a front headlock, gets out of it, looks for the inside thigh kick and finds it, then goes up to the rib cage. Oh, rolling heel kick! Over the top, took a knee to the midsection, set up for a ride. No, drops down the back door, does Barnett, and can he take him out of the sleeper hold now? And Barnett find a finish, just working on the choke. Seems Suzuki like, back up to both feet here. Seems like Suzuki's losing a little steam here. I think he's starting to get a little tired. Oh, Barnett's got him up high. Ooh, to the canvas. This could be it. One, two. No, only a two count. Two and a half count. Barnett looks at the referee and says it was a three. Ref says only a two. Barnett worked hard for that one. Yeah, that one was that one was a hard slam. I'm surprised Suzuki survived it. Both these guys are moving around a lot of beef, guys. But Suzuki, I mean, he's, he's starting to look... Handful of hair there for Barnett. Referee didn't see it. Misses with the elbow uppercut from Suzuki. And a crossing elbow to the jugular. Oh, he walked into a knee. Got flattened like a pancake. Referee's going to count him here. So he gets a 10 count here. He if he can't answer the 10 count, this is also a loss. Barnett asking the crowd... Saying, do you want me to give him a three count now? Here comes Barnett. What's he got? Grabs hold of a single leg. Barnett setting him up for a ride. Here we go. Suplex, no! Barnett lands awkwardly in an arm attempt here from Suzuki. Can he find a submission? Can he get a hold of the left arm now? Barnett in trouble. And Barnett escapes, takes the back. 
Good work from Barnett. Never seen Josh Barnett this busy in a fight, mate. Oh my god, I mean this is this is crazy pace for a heavyweight. You know, they're keeping like featherweight oh, pace. What a Barnett beautiful Bridges. suplex. And still gonna get the pin. Goes to work on that right wrist of Suzuki. Tries to go for the arm bar and loses the position. Now and Suzuki, Suzuki looks for his own arm bar. Suzuki is reversing him now. These two men, more subs than a quiz nurse. And here's Suzuki with a good shot of the arm. But Barnett rolls out. Takes Beautiful the back here. here. Barnett drags him towards the center of the ring, softens him up with the knee to the midsection. Oh, drops him on the top of his head. Surely that's it. Barnett hooks the leg. It's over. That had to be it. I mean, he just spiked him right on top of his head. Move that's currently illegal in the mixed martial arts. Josh Barnett gets the victory here over Hideki Suzuki. And he worked hard for it. Both men had their fair shares and finishes of submission attempts. The third pin for Barnett was a successful one. Barnett, who will go back to the US to fight for the Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix title in 2012 against Daniel Cormier, is certainly having fun here at Dream New Year's Eve under pro wrestling rules. Josh Barnett, showered by the accolades of the fans here. I want to give you a big hello, a big cheerio to CM Punk. Big show, big fan of all of our shows here on HDN. I know that CM Punk is watching New Year's Eve Dream from Saitama. I hope you're enjoying it, Punk. We've got to hook up in 2012, brother. Good sports budget there between Barnett and Suzuki. And Barnett, as he always does, takes the microphone. Hey everybody, how are you doing? Oi, oi, oi. You saw this. I'm honored to be here to fight for all of you guys tonight. To be in the corner, my student Fujimegu and her victory. He said, don't take pro wrestlers Please, lightly. Follow me in the United States when I'm in Strike Force and I take that gold and I bring it right back here to Japan. Thank you very much for always supporting me. So Josh Barnett will head backstage, but not before signing a few autographs, taking a few photos. He has impressed all and sundry. I tell you what, Mike, after watching Josh for a long time as a mixed martial artist, I've got to say, I really like him as a pro wrestler. Man, I am blown <laughs> away. Hey, this is my first pro wrestling match ever. I can honestly say I have never seen a pro wrestling match. And this was some exciting stuff. I was taking notes. You know, I'm a grappler. I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, look at his switch. Look at that. I got to try that. I mean, the That's arm bar in terms of front face lock, the half Boston crab. He had all of it here tonight. Just the foot locks alone and switches. But what mostly what was the most uh, impressive to me was the pace these guys were keeping up. These are 250-pound guys hopping around. It was crazy. I enjoyed everything. That was nuts, and I think there's still more pro wrestling to go. We got Jerome Labana, Peter Ertz, Tim, Tim, Timmy, Silvia. I am 
I Psycho am, robbery in action! I, I am love dying this. to see those guys. I want to see Peter Arson do this stuff. This is amazing. <laughs> I really am. This is exciting. We are like two kids on Christmas a week too late. We are. This is incredible. Jerome Lebanon, the angry Frenchman. I oh. like it. Lots more to come, folks. New Year's Eve here in Japan. Stay tuned, fight fans. More action from Saitama Super Arena right after this. Welcome back to HDNet Fights Dream New Year 2011. It is all happening here in Tokyo, Japan, at the train stations in the heart of the city. Everybody is out. Everybody is celebrating New Year's Eve. And here at the St. Thomas Super Arena, about 25,000 strong have been treated to an incredible night of action. Meanwhile, earlier on today, over in Las Vegas, mixed martial arts fans were treated to action in the form of my man, Alistair Overeem, putting the good night, Irene, on Brock Lesnar. Congratulations, Alistair Overeem, for landing the big kibosh on Big Brock. And here's a little bit of something more for you, Alistair Overeem fans, courtesy of the great Overeem fights we've seen here on HDNet. Alistair Overeem, 33 and 11 in mixed martial arts. Doffy, 6 and 1. Overeem comes in, rightly so is there. Heavy favourite, minus 450. Duffy at plus 350. Three rounds of action. Overeem the stare down. Corner. No extension rounds. The title on the line. Overeem known for the Uber knee. Big ferocious hands on top Duffy. That's, there is that's, no way this one goes a distance. Fight the Reem and the Duck. Michael Chabello, Fred Dream, stops in. Duffy fires the uppercut over him with the knee. And the overhand right from the Reem. Here comes the Hercules. Here comes the power. And Duffy tries to back him up with a curling right. Got matching knee from the Reem. He tags him. It's over. Good night, Reem. Overeem is the dreaming through champion in a heartbeat. Too easy. Nobody, hear me, nobody can stop the Reem. I'm not saying Todd Duffy is an awesome opponent because he took it on short notice. But bring on the big name to the Reem. And I say he takes care of business. He and all of them train. What I wanted to say is, hopefully Todd Duffy smart and tries to take the Reem down. Try to test his waters from his jitsu skills on his back. But I couldn't get there before he got knocked out. We knew that someone was going to get knocked out, Frank. Did you think it would be this quick? I thought it would be within the first half of the first round, but I didn't think it was, the time was going to go out this fast. You know, that's what happens when you take a fight against Overeem on a short, short notice. Overeem wants Fedor Emelianenko. Ustav Kozlugi! Fujita looks way more tan than we last saw. And uh, he looks a little heavier than the last time I saw him, too, and not in a good way. Super. You know, Fatita used to have a, a pretty quick shot, you know. He, you know, he'd shoot a, about a six-foot-long shot. Yeah, big tackle. He needs to do that again, baby, on this one, or it's going to be a three-minute deal, like uh, under three-minute deal, like Overeem said. Once again, the official attendance, 45,406 people here tonight at the Saitama Super Arena. It is Fujita and Overeem. Overeem, the outright favorite, minus 1150. Fujita plus 650. Michael Chavello, Guy Mezga, Jason Mayhem Miller with you. Fujita circling. He cannot allow Alistair to come on the inside and drill the knees to the midsection or the head. 
Alistair is just a beast, just a monster. He looks like a friggin' superhero. Yeah, and you know what? He's pretty quick too for a guy his size. You know, he yeah. was, you know, he used to be a light heavyweight and stuff, and he, and he moved well as a light heavyweight. And he moves real well as a, as a heavyweight too, especially for an MMA heavyweight. These deltoids are bigger than they were two and a half weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, I know. I said he's actually bigger than the last time we saw him. That's the knee I spoke about. Alistair has done so much damage and knocked out so many opponents, none more so than Everton Teixeira in the K1 Grand Prix quarterfinals. Maybe the most devastating K1 knockout we've seen of the year. Yeah, it, it, he needed him and it looked like he killed him. High knee again from Alistair. Oh, rings the bell. <laughs> Fujita, who just shakes his head. Fujita circling the ring here on the outside. Alistair controlling center. Oh. That's it. Good night, Irene! I wow. told you the knees! And Fujita plants it like a train! How is Fujita awake right now? To even grab his head. What a, what a humongous knee. Oh, my goodness. Well, that was... Uh, much quicker than I thought. <laughs> Alistair lived up to his word. He said he'd finish Vegeta in under three minutes, and he did just that. Score another oh. victory there for Team Dream. Welcome back to the Saitama Super Arena Dream New Year's Eve. And there is the man. There is Antonio Inoki. A bigger figure in Japanese sports and entertainment history you could not have. Antonio Inoki, who fought Muhammad Ali in probably the first ever real mixed martial arts fight, wrestler versus boxer, back at the Budokan many moons ago. Antonio Inoki, long-time international negotiator, went to North Korea for peace negotiations, talked to Saddam Hussein over in Iraq. He's the man that Japan sent out when they needed someone to talk to international tyrants about freeing hostages. I was there a couple of years ago when he got inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Antonio Inoki, who fought Andre the Giant, who fought Hulk Hogan over here in Japan. Antonio Inoki, stars do not get any bigger. We hope you've been enjoying the show, folks. It is all part of the entertainment here at Dynamite. I should say a dream New Year's Eve. No longer Dynamite, of course. But you know what? It's what it's all about here tonight. Entertainment. That's why we've got wrestling on the card. That's why we have mixed rules. Kickboxing, MMA. Sit back and enjoy it all. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the pump. Enjoy the pageantry. to this place they are going off their rockers for antonio Inoki. mike i want to touch him as he walks past i just want to touch him don't we're gonna get kicked out don't I touch can't him. reach i can't we reach can't reach him don't touch him i want to touch the scar look at him how old is he now hans how old is Inoki? 105 that would have been my guess too 105 for sure this is just incredible in the presence of Inoki. He's about 10 metres away from us. Painting some kanji. And this crowd is just going eight for him. They love this man. I can turn over my shoulder. There's young women in the crowd crying when Anoki came down to the ring. Old men in the crowd are sitting there like giddy schoolgirls, biting on their nails. This is nuts. If you don't know who Inoki is, do some research. And he is just a huge star. That's the character for happiness. Happiness. Inoki with an HDMI microphone. Inoki is talking into the HDMI microphone. That is cool. Yeah. 
So that character is pronounced Xiao Ase. He says, if, you, if, you're, if you're Genki, if you have energy, then you can be, you can have happiness, basically. And we know, Hans, that he's about to do the Ich Ni San Da. Oh, I've been waiting for that all night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Folks, if you're watching at home on HTNet, get out of your seats when he does it. Pump your fist into the air better than anything you'll see on Jersey Shore. And join in when he does the Ich Ni San Da. <laughs> Hans, you're not waiting for us to Come on, Hans, that's what we pay you for. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what Use your words, Hans. Use your words. He you just said uh, that Japan in general and Japanese MMA has been going through a lot of tough times and that, you know, that Inoki Bambier uh, ceased to exist, but he's, he's right in the middle of something. <laughs> He said, uh, you know, here at the end of the year, one more time. That's one good-looking old man right there. He's a hottie, that's for sure. He said, in this, in this world, lots of tough things going on. Shin on him like American dad. <laughs> Come on, Hans, we're missing Hans, out here. What are people laughing at? <laughs> he can't be talking about hard times. What are these people laughing at? He was, he was, but... He must be talking about the bright future. You guys were talking over me. I couldn't hear him. said... <laughs> Is he talking about his resplendent white suit? <laughs> <laughs> Again, he's just talking about the, the general state of things in Japan, the general state of things in, in Japanese MMA. The guy's been talking for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking about the same stuff. What do you want to say? Beautiful girls there. How does a Nike <laughs> still have a full head of hair like that, Mike? I'm jealous. Ooh, balance. Hair club for men. Ooh, something's going on. Inoki's still in the ring. Did he say why he was on a cross when he came in, Hans? Is he like the savior of MMA and wrestling tonight? You know, before we were looking for the word to describe Inoki because there's not really a, an analog in America, but I, I think the Jesus of Japanese MMA comes close to it, talking about the, the importance now, of it. we've got some Arabic-looking men strutting the catwalk. What's all this about? Hans, you got to get on with translations. What the hell's going on here? I'm a little bit scared here. I'm just going to back up. This dude's got a sword in his mouth. like Persian terrorists entering the ring. <laughs> You know, he's still talking as if he doesn't see him. Okay, the terrorist with the uh, orange turban looks a little like me. I'm a little disturbed by that. What's going on here, Hans? Guys are carrying swords. Swords happening. Crazy pimp suits here. This man looks a little wild. They got weapons. One of them's got a uh, kendo so stick. I don't be sword. careful. This is going to be dangerous. All right, Mike, I'm just going to stand behind you. Why is the little guy next to us? Okay, maybe it's a peaceful thing. It looks like it. What, what's going on here, Hans? Who is that man wearing the $500,000? Oh, he's just cracked a Nike over the head! What's going on here? I'm throwing one of my limp balls at him, Mike. <laughs> What is going on? He just cracked Inoki over the head with the kendo stick. See, that's why we have Homeland Security. Inoki's going to take the scarf off. Inoki's going to slap him. Inoki's going to do some serious ass whooping here. Oh, Inoki's taking the jacket off. Inoki is not to be messed with. You've messed with his hair. You've upset Inoki. 
Oh, look at the big man calling him on. Now, the turban dude, who looks strangely like me, has taken his jacket off. Mike, they all look like your relatives. What's going on oh, here? Oh, the two turbans are fighting each other. What's going on here? I just want to see Anoki deliver a chop to someone. It's Anoki versus these crazy turban-wearing, weapon-bearing guys. This dude with the worst fake beard I've ever seen. Oh, he said I Don't come in... Don't fall for his handshake, Anoki. He said I come in peace. He's despite the come stick in peace and the sword. Carrying a freaking four-foot stick and a bunch of flowers and a sword. Okay, the little guy next to us has yet to do anything. So, Mike, if Inoki strikes this guy, we take this guy down. Okay, you and me can We're tackling both. this dude right here. And Hans, you just try and translate it best you can. We let Inoki handle the two turban guys. We hit the little guy next to Look us. Look at the little guy. Oh, there's the kendo stick to Inoki. Inoki's going to smack someone. I can feel it, Mike. I don't know what's going on. I don't think the crowd knows what's going on. But it's so exciting. Okay, now, Orange Turban is down in front of our commentary position here. Okay, they're leaving. All right, they've he given the kendo saying, stick remember, to Inoki and the sword. Inoki's handing back the sword. Little Turban dude still hasn't moved. And, well, obviously, Inoki's not going to kick their asses because they're left. Okay. So, so that was very strange. Hans? He said, I haven't been hit in a long time. It hurts. Said in order to close off uh, the year, I, I was, as I was saying, <laughs> let's close everything up. Wait a minute, what the hell just happened? What the hell was that all about, huh? You can't you talk about respect for elderly. What's going on here? hundred year old Inoki? I've thrown more at you than I've eaten here, Hans. He's, he's 68, by the way. 68. He's a good looking man. Whatever. Three turban guys show up, kick his butt, and Who are the three random turban guys? I have no idea. Was it the random cross that Inoki came out of? Why did they have a camel? I mean, what the hell is going who's, on here? Whose bars of flowers are they in the ring? Why are they still there? This is why it is difficult to translate those things. I have no idea who those guys are. What are you talking? What are you saying? Is That's what I was waiting for. I'm gonna try and touch the mic. I have to say, in seven years of coming here, that is the most bizarre thing I have ever witnessed. Who was that picture of that had? Was it Ricky Dolzan? It might have been Ricky Dolzan. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, that was all a bit strange, but highly entertaining. IGF Bombay, yeah! There's Jerome Labana. He's coming up shortly. K1 great Jerome Labana will be taking on Tim Sylvia. Three-time K1 world champion Peter Erd is going to be taking on old Ironhead, Kazuyuki Fujita. Bobby Lashley also wrestled here in Japan earlier this year. And the tag team match coming up later on. Sawada Atsushi, Suzukawa Shinichi take on Sakuraba and Shibata. This place is mad. I love this. Moment, Mike. The last time I was this confused, I did one of those tests in my fiance's girly magazine, found that I'm a borderline lesbian. I, I mean, I have no idea what happened. Inoki was talking about the state of economy forever and ever. Three turbo guys show up, beat the crap out of him, and leave. Now, it looks like these are the rest of our wrestlers. There's Ironhead Fujita. The man with no neck and a head to rival that of Tito Ortiz. And my old mate, I am so excited to commentate him, Peter Ertz. Michael, selling you backstage. Out of all the fighters I've met over my many, many years traveling the world with this sport, Peter Ertz is the nicest guy in the world. Peter Arch, 
is the coolest dude I have ever met, and also the only person in the world that I do not understand a single word that he says. Big Tim Sylvia is here! Yes, indeed. And we're gonna see him pro wrestle today. JLB, Jerome LeBanna, the fighting Frenchman, K1 superstar, looking good. He's lost weight, Mike. I am really looking forward to Peter Arch and Jerome LeBanna and Tim Sylvia's pro wrestling day, uh, uh, fight, uh, you know, matches, simply because, you know, Barnett is a veteran. He knows what he's doing. I want to know what these guys are going to do. I want to know if the Turban Men are coming back. I want to know who the hell the Turban Men are. I want to say LeBanna and Earth go to town, double team the Turban Men. I, I really need to know what's going on. Like, I'm, I'm baffled with what's going on. Now, we believe that the uh, turban dude with the sword is actually Tiger Jake Sin.
pretty sure it's the first time I've seen that. Listen to this place go nuts! <laughs> Dream is a happening!
they call the Japanese GSP. Katsunori Kakuno, the former deep lightweight champion, seven and three in his last ten. He's beat the likes of Andre Tida, Wu Kyung Jung, Kaisuke Nakamura, trained in judo and Kyokushin karate, and known for his present kick to the liver. And he's in the main debut in 2005. From 2007 off to undergo rehab for a recurring knee injury. If you talk to him, if you understand Japanese, he's renowned for having a very strong southern Japanese accent. Some tough losses to Jay Z Calvert, Eddie Alvarez, Masuta Huolta. 16 4 and 2 record, 9 wins by knockout. It's always a pleasure to see Katsunori Kakuno. And look at the crowd here. It has filled up even more over the last hour. I'd say we're easily over the 25, 26,000 mark by now. Mike, would you like to make a bet? I bet on my man Giannotsu. If you want to take the bet, your man is Kakuno. These are the stakes. The loser has to wear eyeshadow and lipstick for the rest of this broadcast. Done. I'm in. It's on. Hey, give me one of those dresses. I'll wear that too it's if you want me to. On. I am not losing this bet. Folks, sit back and enjoy the greatest ring entrance in all the world of sports. Yeah, this is truly a treat when it comes to entrances. I think the only one that beats this was Genki Sudo's Lion King entrance in 2006. Dynamite Dynamite. In 2006, yeah. Chiro Jinotsu Nagashima. All I can say, Mike, is that Shinya Aoki never recovered from the shame he incurred last New Year's Eve. Nor did Frank Tree. Are you ready to incur the I am ready to do it. Kikuno is not going to take this guy lightly. He's going to do one of those karate front kicks, and you're going to be wearing lipstick for the rest of the night. And that is a scary thought. I'd rather would have just bet on turbans. And <laughs> My man, Jinotsu, will prevail four and two mixed martial arts record. All four wins by knockout. One loss by submission. Made it to the finals of the K1 World Max in 2010 was the Japan tournament winner. A second degree back belt in Japanese Kempo. Graduated from the University of Marketing and Distribution Sciences in Kobe. His younger brother Kengo is a professional boxer. He said in interviews he originally wanted to be an MMA fighter or a pro wrestler and accidentally became a K1 fighter. So tonight's mixed rules bout may determine his path for the future. And how will this mixed bout operate? This is very similar to his match with uh, Aoki last year, where the first.
first round is a three-minute uh, kickboxing rules match, just like the other kickboxing rules matches we've had tonight. And then that round two is going to be a five-minute dream rules match. Uh, we all saw what happened last year, but obviously Kikuno is not as unbalanced a fighter as Aoki is. Ooh, for my sake, I hope he runs around like Aoki did in the first round. I mean, Nagashima is a is a pretty accomplished kickboxer. Second round, mixed martial arts. Something else of note here is that this is at a catch weight because Nagashima's been doing some pro wrestling and stuff, and, and really it, it was too tough for him to get down to the 155 lightweight uh, limit. So they met at, I believe it's 162 around there. Nagashima with the black belt around his waist. Nagashima with four ounce gloves. That jackhammer of a right hand is scary indeed. He embarrassed Shinya Aoki last year. And do the same here to Kakuno. Michael Chevello, Mike Kogan, Hans Thompson with you. Wait, that's not fair. They're kickboxing with four arms gloves. What the hell's going on here? You didn't tell me that before I bet. Right, right. hand from Kakuno, overhand right from Kikuno. Kikuno. Also in there. Oh. Oh. He blows early. Mai Tai Clinch, and they spill to the canvas. Well, it's only from Brawl early on here. Giannotsu glances towards his corner. You're doing okay so far, Kogan. I like my chances. See that head oh. movement? You see that? Giannotsu can take a knock. We've seen that in his K1 career. And look how low the hands are on Kakuno. Giannotsu can connect with that right hand up the center corridor. Giannotsu does have a mean knockout left hook, so I really hope Kakuno keeps his hands up for the next two minutes. For my oh, there's the left hook from Giannotsu. The crowd are getting behind this one in a way they haven't gotten behind it tonight. Oh. And he's on rubber legs here, Junotsu. Uh, this could be trouble. Junotsu shaking out the cobwebs. Kakuno one, relaxed. One more, you Japanese hillbilly. Come on. Junotsu's yeah. going to stand up. He takes an uppercut. He takes a knee. What is he doing? Move around the ring, Junotsu. I do not want to wear lipstick and eyeshadow. Toe to toe! Oh this God. is crazy! This fight is a nuts! This is awesome, and these are four ounce gloves! Look at that, he did a little spinning knee. Oh, Giannotsu gets tagged! A high knee! An uppercut! And Kakuno just shrugs him off. Referee says, come on forward. Oh. Giannotsu, can he survive another 80 seconds? He is getting pounded from pillar to post. Kakuno has awesome head movement, bro. Watch Kikuno it. Kakuno is just abusing him. Giannotsu yeah. taking more shots than an alcoholic. He's missing, he's making a miss every single time. Kikuno has crazy. awesome head movement. He's, he's into this fight. He's not taking this fight lightly. And Giannotsu make it out of this round. I don't think Kikuno is shooting at the, at the beginning of the next round if it happens. He's not going to do an Aoki, that's for sure. No, but I, I do hope he takes it to the ground. Front kick from Kikuno. Will we see his patented present kick? And they tie up again. And this has got madness written all over it. Looks like Nag Nagashima has cleared his head a little bit here, maybe, though. Nagashima, yes! Oh. Yes, baby! That's one and one. Oh, one my God. Each. And now no, Kikuno. was a slip up. No, it wasn't. Come yes. on, Mikey. He popped right up. Look Hunch. at Kakuno's bloody nose. He did a momentary chicken dance. <laughs> he did no chicken dance. He popped right up. Mean from Kakuno. Wow. And Kakuno's wow. been cut over the right eye. Uppercut went so high, organ started playing. Oh! This is, the, this is the most entertaining round of the whole card. This is nuts. That is New Year's Eve, gentlemen. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> and is this crowd going bananas or what? My word. Well, I, I think we should take a side bet. as a Japanese crowd can go, but... I think we need a side bet here as to whether this is going to the ground at all. 
No, 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 no. Let's not get get ahead of ourselves. You want to wear lipstick and eye shadow? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. You shut the hell up and translate for us. That's what you paid for. Exactly. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Unbelievable. Kakuno dropping Nagashima. Nagashima dropping Kakuno. Stiff left hand there. Nagashima backpedaling, fires out a left, and whoop, whoop, whoop. Down goes Kakuno. Four ounce gloves doing the damage under kickboxing rules in the opening round. That perfect left hand from Nagashima. Okay, folks, we move into the second round. We are now under mixed martial arts rules. The first round was kickboxing rules. Giannotsu, Nagashima, and Katsunori Kakuna. Kakuna looks the worst for wear out of the two after the first round. And here we go. It'll most likely stay on its feet, I believe. Jab from Giannotsu. Counter left hook from Kakuna. Giannotsu's got to keep his hands up here. If nobody gets finished here, it's a draw, incidentally. We both get away scot free, Mike. I was going to say, what happens then? Do we both wear lipstick? No, we're both scot free. Back to their feet, round kick from Giannotsu. Well, that first right round there. was awesome. And a left hand from Kakuno. Look how high up in the air the chin is of Kakuno. Go up the centre, Giannotsu. Kuno's right eye is starting to close. Kuno has got to know something about ground. I mean, he survived an onslaught of submission attempts from Jay-Z Calvin. Kakuno does have a 16-4-2 mixed martial arts record. He is the former deep lightweight champion. But let's not forget last year, in the mixed martial arts round, Giannotsu knocked out Aoki. Short knee from Kakuno. Giannotsu moving around, using the entire ring. Jumping knee from the Otaku fighter. Old left hook counter from Kakuno and another one. Three minutes 45 remains. Straight right hand from Giannotsu. Kakuno's starting to get a little tired. I really hope he just shoots and takes this guy down. Giannotsu, who was a very happy fan backstage at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas at the UFC win. Nick Diaz fought BJ Penn, caught up with him then in joining South, his first ever UFC experience. And he is tearing it up here yet again for New Year's Eve. Right hand to the jaw, just glances the three-day stubble of Kakuno. Kakuno looking to take the back standing. He does now. Come on, just sit down, just sit down. Put one foot behind and sit down. Okay. And we're on the canvas for the first time. Kakuno takes the back. I'm glad I didn't make that bet. Now we're talking. Okay. Come on, Kakuno. He's a trouble Come time. on, baby. Hit him. Kakuno Hit him. pounding away with the right hand. Hit him. Poke him in the eyes. Chiyonotsu tracking into the side of the head, posting up on one arm now, Kakuno. Can he find the rear naked choke here, Mike? He's got him flattened out. Chiyonotsu's head just bobbing with these punches. This is not good for Chiyonotsu. Pretty good. <laughs> I know Frank Trick, wherever he is, is smiling right now. Next rules bounce. Kakuno celebrating. Giannotsu jumping off the apron here. 
Mike, what was he doing here? Well, he was he was holding his other arm. That's why he couldn't go for the. He was holding his wrist. Uh, Jinatsu was. Why didn't he just cover the side of his head with this right hand? Oh, I would imagine he was pretty dazed from those punches. <laughs> He, pr he should have, but, you know, I'm glad he didn't. You know, one factor there, I, I, I think, Michael, is that he had his, his hips flattened out so bad, it didn't look like he could push up off the canvas at all. And, folks, coming up next to you on Dream New Year's Eve from St. Thomas Super Arena. Check it out. The final. Antonio Banduelas versus Bibiano Fernandez. The crowd, the bands of my drum free chat. Welcome back to HDNet Fights Dream New Year 2011. And it's night time in Tokyo. And everybody is out. Everybody is celebrating New Year's Eve here. You see shots in Shinjuku, outside of Shinjuku Station. Outside of the beautiful Kabuchiko district, where Japan, where Tokyo likes to party. But the party tonight is here at the St. Thomas Super Arena. We estimate over 25,000 strong. And what a night they've been treated to so far in the previous fight we just saw. It was Kakuno Kaunyaji Onotsu in the second round of their mixed rules fight. That moves us ahead now to the final of the Bantamweight Grand Prix. Antonio Banuel has taken on Bibiano Fernandez. Mike, how do you see this one going down? Man, you know, it's, it's a hard fight to call because, you know, on paper, uh, obviously Bibiano has, you know, has uh, world-class world, world class grappling, uh, far more advanced than Imanari as far as his diversity is concerned. He's pretty good on his feet, uh, and he's got pretty good takedowns. That being said, Antonio Banuel has awesome takedown defense. A pretty good stand-up of his own. He's also a pretty good counter-puncher. So, really, Banuelos plays it smart. He gets in and gets out. Doesn't get overcommitted to punches. You know, very similar to the way he fought um, Imanari. He could pull it off. Fernandez with a bigger entourage than Vincent Chase makes his way out to the ring. Can he win yet another Dream Grand Prix title? What will be the keys to victory here for Bibiano, Mike? Well, for Bibiano, obviously, you know, use his boxing to close the distance, shoot in, take Banuelos down and then basically just work for a submission from there. You know, grind it out, don't, don't overcommit too much, uh, but mainly just get Banuelos to the ground. Emiano Fernandez looking highly confident, highly relaxed. Before the last intermission, Mike, he was actually ringside, came over to our table, shook our hands. Not often you see a fighter emerge like that before preparing for a final. 
It just shows how relaxed Bibiano is. Yeah, I mean, Bibiano is a very relaxed fighter. You know, some fighters get super tense, some fighters uh, stay super relaxed, some fighters uh, appear to be super relaxed, but they're tense. In Bibiano's case, he's genuinely very relaxed, and that can only come from, you know, years of training, believing in your skills, and a lot of confidence. That being said, I gotta get this out of the way. Bibiano, uh, before the fight, wanted to thank all his friends in Vancouver who are watching, his kids who are watching it uh, live in Vancouver, and his wife, Amanda. And also, big cheerio to Zombie Prophet. I know he's a Bibiano Fernandez fan, as we all are. Matt Takimoto, Matt Hume, Kultar Gill, all the crew with Bibiano. Onto the apron goes the Brazilian. As I said earlier, a truly complete all-rounded mixed martial artist. We know he's a gun on the ground, but he's striking. Has come along in leaps and bounds. Antonio Epic moustache, the crazy haircut, jumping around like a human grana bean, Antonio Banuelos. This, the biggest fight of Banuelos' career, Mike. I would have to say this, I mean, Banuelos has been in some battles in WEC and then later on in the UFC, but to come this far in a tournament and, and, and just be one fight away from a belt, uh, he's never held a belt, so I, I would have to say, yeah, this is probably the most important fight in Banuelos' uh, career. Experience the way of Banuelos. Age goes the way of Banuelos by one year. Four inches the taller. And Bibiano Fernandez both men weighed in upon 34.5. Look at Ben Wallace. He is ready to explode here. And that's what he needs to do against Bibiano Fernandez, is to explode. Go after Fernandez early. Do not allow Bibiano to get him to the ground. Ben Wallace is going to keep moving and moving and striking. Get on the inside, land the blows, then get out. Michael Chevello, Mike Kogan, Hans Thompson with you. The final of the dream Bantamweight Grand Prix. Both men in orthodox stance. Already Bibiano trying to back him into a corner. And Van Wallace duking it out. Van Wallace will stand and trade. Bibiano intimidates a lot of opponents with his ability, with the size of him here at Featherweight. But I don't think that Van Wallace is one to be intimidated, Mike. No, I don't think Van Wallace is intimidated at all. I mean, he's been in, you know, he's been in battles. He's battled Miguel Torres. He's fought the likes of Paul Escobedo. I mean, he's fought a lot of really tough guys. You know, the, the key here is just moving. Like, he's moving around. Like, he can't get BB to, to, to catch him in, in, in a... Catch him in a corner where he's got nowhere to go. You know, he really doesn't want to end up there. Uh, he needs to just constantly move. And right now, Bibiano's actually doing a very good job in cutting the ring. See, even he, he's cutting the ring, he's always got... Uh... Oh, Ben Wallace just shoves the legs up for Bibiano, trying to go to work on the ground and pound. Ben Wallace gets caught! Two, three, four, five! 
This is Josh Violence from Bibiana Fernandez. Side control now. Pounding down on Ben Mullins. It's over. It's good night, Irene. Bibiana Fernandez, the dream. Bands away from Preacher. Mikey, that was awesome. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Banuelos actually tripped going backwards. And Bibiano was just right there to jump on it. You know, hey, this is MMA. This is not kickboxing. If you fall, the fight still continues. So Bibiano, you know, just really took advantage of the opportunity, jumped on top of it, and really capitalized on it. Bibiano Fernandez, I should say, Antonio Manuelos gallons in defeat. He went toe to toe with Bibiano. He had the right idea. But Fernandez just continues, Mike, to improve and improve and improve. I would not be surprised if Fernandez is the next fighter on the Dream roster to get a call up to one of the American organizations. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, you know, Bibiano is, is is a tournament fighter. He knows how to win the tournaments. He's he was dominant at 145, and here he's just so much bigger and stronger than everybody. He's he's definitely a phenomenal, phenomenal fighter. Look at this, clipped him with the overhand right, Fernandez. You can see he just tripped Manuelos right there and just fell in. back, kicked up the hips. And Fernandez found range with these right just hands. Just relentless, yeah, just relentless. Wow. That's two fights in a row. We've seen two fighters take a severe beatdown. This one ending in a similar position to what we saw with Kakuno and Junotsu. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's at this level, you know, any, any slight any slight situation where, where an opponent can take advantage of it, they will take advantage of it and just end the fight. I mean, it's just that easy. Um, and, you know, unfortunately for Banuelos, I mean, I would like to see this fight go on a little bit. I think they were going to slug it out. So, Banuelos with the trophy presented to him by the CEO of HDNet Fights, Andrew Simon. Thank you, Thank you. Team from Black Mamba training up Viviano Fernandez, an absolute treat. Salva Padai, all the gang who are watching live on HDNet up in Canada. The work they've done with Viviano, particularly in his striking. As I said, one of the most complete mixed martial artists in the game at the moment, certainly at this bands and weight. And Mike, he really is going to be a force to be reckoned with in 2012, Viviano. Oh, Viviano's going to be, uh, you know, Viviano's going to be a force, and especially at this weight class. Like I said, he's so much faster and stronger than he was at 145, and he was, you know, and he was great at 145. His boxing continues to improve. He's constantly training. He's actually switched camps now. He's starting to train with Matt Hume, and uh, and and there's Andrew Simon, our boss, presenting him with. Uh, with a trophy. And what a pleasure it has been over these years commentating Bibiano Fernandez here on HDNet. He's been an absolute treat. And Mike, it couldn't happen to a nicer person, Bibiano. Man, probably one of the most humble people I have ever met in my life is Bibiano. And, you know, genuinely humble. Not one of those, you know, I'm really great, I'm going to act humble and have you build me up. But really genuinely very humble guy. Uh, I'm sure his kids uh, are enjoying him, uh, watching him win this title. Uh, he's bringing it back home. His wife, Amanda. Uh, up in Vancouver, they're watching it. Yeah, before we go any further, Chuck Liddell is having a baby. Antonio Benuelos wanted to send him all the best, and, and we want to join him in, in, in doing that as well. Uh, Chuck Liddell, of course, an MMA legend. Yeah, I just wanted to add there, I mean, it, in addition to everything you guys said about his personality, it's great to see guys like this who came, you know, from nothing. Like, Viviano had, like, a dirt floor and no plumbing growing up. Like, as poor as poor can be, the Amazon being one of the poorest regions of Brazil. To come from that to being, a, you know, a champion in two different divisions and, you know, it, it's, it's really an incredible story. Now we'll hear from Fernandez. First one, I want to say thank you for God. For everything he did for me and for my family, for my son, Elijah Gabriel, my wife, my coach, Tony Peck, Black Mamba, Mac, Matthew Hill. Guys, you don't help me, for sure I'm not gonna be here. That's for you, that's for Japan. I respect Japan, Japan, my home, my circle home. Thank you, 
And this time the belt comes from Canada. Great words there from a great champion, Bibiano Fernandez. Folks, still more to come from Dream New Year's Eve when we return. We're back to pro wrestling. Jerome Labana takes on Big Tim Sylvia. Welcome back to HDNet Fights Dream New Year 2011. A Hilton in Shinjuku, Tokyo. Beautiful by night, as is the entire city. And out here in Saitama, about a one hour drive north of Tokyo, at the Saitama Super Arena, we are moving into the business end of this fantastic card. And now for the 12th match. Time former UFC heavyweight champion Tim Sylvia. Looking like a big unit yet again, six foot eight. He may be up towards 300 pounds. We saw him last time in mixed martial arts action at Pro Elite 2 against Andreas Kliniatakis, who he decisioned in Molina, Illinois. And here's Sylvia once again in pro wrestling action, taking on one of the all time great K1 fighters, Jerome Laverna. Sylvia actually experiencing a resurgence of sorts in his mixed martial arts career, winning six of his last seven. He was recently awarded his purple belt in BJJ. Originally scheduled to wrestle Brent Rogers here tonight. Lavanna filling in for Rogers. If, I, if any of you guys are on Twitter, I would highly recommend incidentally checking out his comments about Brent Rogers. He had some not so nice things to say about Brent Rogers. Oh, Mikey. 
I feel like we're back at the K1 World Grand Prix. I know, Levina always enters the wacky music. One of the most imposing figures, one of the most violent fighters in K1 history. Rock and roll, JLB, Jerome Labanna, the battling cyborg, the human refrigerator, a 78, 20 and one kickboxing record with an amazing 60 knockouts. He fought them all. He almost knocked them all out. A black belt in Kyokushin Karate. He's appeared in a number of films, of course. One of his favorite films being Conan the Barbarian. And what a Conan he would have been. So many epic fights over the years, but none more so, I'd say, than the quadrilogy against Mark Hunt. There is nothing like it. Here he comes. And he's going to keep the boxing gloves on. The IGF heavyweight champion. Does he look in outstanding shape or what? I mean, GLB always looks great. You know, I don't think we've ever seen him look out of shape, but he's just so determined. And, you know, it scares me. I mean, like I said, I'm not a pro at pro wrestling, but both of these guys are wearing gloves. They're both fighters, and I wouldn't be surprised if they start throwing it down, you know, real style. Jerome LaBanna walks in front of our commentary position. He is looking lean. Mike, I haven't seen Jerome look that lean since about the late 1990s. Yeah, he's definitely been pumping iron and keeping himself in great shape. He goes through the ropes. The man with one of the highest knockout ratios in all the world of combat sports. He's about to do it wrestling against Big Tim Sylvia. Right to the show. The banner is enormously popular in Japan. For many years, he was certainly the most popular commodity in K1. Yes. If not, maybe arguably Mike, outside of Masato, probably the most popular K1 fighter of all time. Well, I think for years he was more popular than Masato was, just simply because of the length of the time that he's fought here. But I mean, he just, you know, he packed. I mean, he's, you know, he's the face of K1 from the elite days. Now you know Jerome Labanna wearing the gloves here, the boxing gloves, means he won't be able to put many technical wrestling moves on Big Tim Sylvia. Sylvia, however, is wearing the four-ounce gloves, the pro elite gloves, it looks like. So Sylvia will be able to put some moves on Jerome Labanna. Labanna's going to look to pound away. Labanna has awesome leg kicks, beautiful liver kicks, fantastic punches to the jaw. And you know Jerome Labanna loves that nice hook and the overhand shot. He is a southpaw fighter. So he will throw the overhand left and the lead big right hook. And then LeBanna is, I'm assuming he's defending his title, right? He didn't just bring the belt for the looks. I believe so. The IGF heavyweight champion, Jerome LeBanna, Big Tim Sylvia. Both men have wrestled here in Japan in the past. Michael Chavello, Mike Hogan, Hans Thompson with you. LeBanna comes out jabbing. He's got a beautiful jab on him, LeBanna. Good combination fighter. Was always the bridesmaid, never the bride, so to speak, in K1. Made it to a record number of finals, but never won. Big Tim Sylvia gets him on the canvas early. Whoa, that was not even a takedown. He just leaped forward and, and then they fell. Now the question is, with boxing gloves on, what can LeBanna do from this position? There's no way he can clinch the hands around the back and control the posture when Big Tim Sylvia is up on him like that. Well, actually, he could clinch the hands to control the posture. The question would be what he can do is just because, I mean, how versed can he be off his back? Sylvia jabbing with open palms here, moves forward now, does Big Tim, shoots in for a double leg, and LaBella goes for a ride. Tim Sylvia inside control. Wow, that is a high pickup. I mean, this guy is, what, seven foot tall? He just picked up LaBella all the way in the air. He's a two enormously strong man, a side control for Big Tim. Banner's working to shrimp in and put him into his guard, and he does. And LaBella returns to his feet. Tim Sylvia lets him up. Labanna probing with the jab. Spinning back into the midsection. Got to be careful not to get the heel lodged in the belly button. Oh, and Labanna went for a shot. How about that? JLB with the gloves on goes for a shot. In on Tim Sylvia. North-south position now. Sylvia. Sylvia's got a nice head control. He's trying to go for a guillotine. Yeah, 
has the height over Labana, has the weight over Labana, but Labana is strong. Built like a tank, knees to the midsection from both men. Sylvia, one arm behind the back of the net. Trying to pull the head down for the meet and greet, perhaps. There it goes, but to no avail. Clips him with a short left hook. And goes for a shoot again, gets the tank down. Side control for Tim Sylvia. Oh, that was that was actually very skilled. I mean, he slipped the jab and he went straight for a double leg. For a guy to do it to a shorter guy. Is... Oh, there's a liver kick from Labetta twice. And now Sylvia's hurt. Labetta drops him. Sylvia on the canvas. Referee puts a count on. Well, we Those were two nasty right. liver kicks. And we heard the snap from it. And Labetta's not wearing shin guard, so. Here comes Labetta. Look at the ferocity on the face of JLB. Liver kick again. He folds him in half. Chopping the tree from the base, and down goes Sylvia for a second time. And Labana just strolls back to the neutral corner. Look at the footprint on the carcass of Tim Sylvia. Can Labana finish him now? Sylvia gasping for air. He tries for a takedown. Labana just shrugs him off. Sylvia's hurt here. Gives up his back, and Labana can pound him out. Sylvia and a whole world of hurt. It's over. Labana's pounded him out. And he retains the strap. Mike, the beginning of the end for those two just living kicks. Yeah, I don't think Sylvia ever recovered from him. I mean, it was kind of wobbly. That last, that last takedown wasn't even a takedown. He just fell off. You know, Mike, for people who are thinking this is completely fake, I hope we get a shot of the left side of the carcass of Tim Sylvia. Oh, you can see the footprints all over Tim Sylvia. It takes a lot of power to leave a footprint like that. Oh, for sure. I mean, you got to realize, Gerald Vanner is not a professional pro wrestler. He comes in here swinging, you put those gloves on, the instincts take over. And Jerome Levanner is a nasty individual. He's not going to do you any favors. He sends get well letters to hypochondriacs just for the hell of it. And look at the imprint on the body there of Tim Sylvia. There's no fake in that, Mike. No, I mean, that, you know, he's got an imprint on both sides of his body. Look at that. There it is. Beautiful roundhouse kick off the right. That being the lead foot switched up of Jerome Levanner. Wow. Sylvia trying to get Labana down. Labana just shrugging him, and Sylvia actually hitting the back of his head there as he went to canvas. Yeah, no, Labana actually did a foot sweep. He had his foot behind Sylvia, so when he leaned into him, you know, Sylvia just tripped over his foot and, and went down. It was actually a pretty good takedown. Yeah, and just clobbered him out from here. Great performance from Labana. And good sportsmanship. Superina is enjoying every moment of this as we tick down to the big one. Fedor Emelianenko, Satoshi Ishii. But coming up next, Peter Roots and Old Iron Hand. And now for the 13th match. Bug. Yeah, Jim Fukat. Who's the Kazuki Yuzu? I'm at Pride, Mike. <laughs> yeah, we got... Well, last time we saw Fujita, he was fighting uh, Alistair Overeem. Getting put into a mini coma. Had dynamite by the Reem. Kazuyuki Fujita, old Lionhead, the real beast. A 15 and 9 mixed martial arts record, a three-time IWGP heavyweight champion. Two-time Japanese national champion in Greco-Roman. He narrowly missed the mark in making the Japanese Olympic team. 
former pupil of Japanese pro wrestling legend Antonio Inoki. Graduated from Nihon University with a degree in humanities. He trained in mixed martial arts with the king of the streets, Marco Huas. And was actually in the last pride fight ever. He began pro wrestling in 1996 under New Japan Pro Wrestling and continued to wrestle throughout his entire MMA career. to see Peter Roach here. Great ovation for all Ironhead. Roach has always been riotously popular here in Japan. I'd say about even on the fans' stakes there. Peter Roots wearing his traditional Dutch colours. The traditional lumberjack's vest that he had on walking out to the ring. The man who was the master of the head kick knockout. Who ruled K1 for quite a long time. Saying son, old lion head, Kazuyuki Fujita. This is Fujita's territory. And Roots, like Jerome LeBanna, opting to wear the boxing gloves here. So, can Fujita sustain the strikes of a former three-time K1 world champion? Michael Chevello, Mike Kogan, Hans Thompson with you. Ertz already on the front foot. Can he get the head kick here on Fujita? It's a big head. It's a big target. Shouldn't be too hard to miss. Outside thigh kick from Ertz. And again from Ertz. Ertz opening up like a house of fire. Fujita full rushes him in. Oh, almost over the top rope. Fujita incredibly strong, like a human bulldozer. Double leg now from Fujita. Ertz holding onto the ropes and shrugs him off. Stiff right hand. Oh, there's the head kick. There's the head kick. And Fujita lay down. Can he get up from a Peter Ertz head kick? Ertz going to finish him. Ertz wants to pin him. Two. No, only a two count. Ertz went for the pin. And Fujita cleverly rolls out of the ring. Time to regroup on the floor. Ertz is calling him back in. But Fujita takes a moment to reset the marbles, wipe off the cobwebs. I'm surprised he got up from a Peter Ertz high kick. I know, that was amazing. I mean, I'm surprised that he's still walking around. Fujita oh, looks like he got hit. Looks like he, yeah, it looks like he's still hurt. I mean, Ertz Peter didn't Archer's want him counted out. Ertz hey. wanted to pin him. He wanted to pin the pro wrestler. He wanted to make a statement here to Fujita. And you can see a massive welt already on the tricep area of Fujita from where he's taken Ertz's kicks. Fujita's talking smack, walking back and forth. Fujita's telling Ertz, I'll get him when I'm down ready. And Ertz counters right back on him, goes to the liver, then up to the head, back to the body, shots to the carcass. Fujita in a whole world of bother. Kick to the kidneys. Fujita goes down for the second time. Wow, Kazuyuki Fujita taking more punishment than a bondage parlor. And Ertz stalking back and forth. 
He wants to finish here. Does the Dutch lumberjack. Vegeta catches the kicking leg. Sweeps out the support leg. Nicely done. Not where Ertz wants to be on his back against Vegeta. Ertz looking for the ropes. And Vegeta must break the hole. Oh, he stomps on him. And again. And foot to the face. Ertz in trouble now. Vegeta. Is he going to slingshot him here? He's got him one single leg here, Vegeta. Ertz to the ropes once more. And Vegeta breaks the hole. He went to stomp. Oh, he slapped the referee. Hey, Vegeta's not playing by the rules here. Ertz has got to get back to his feet. And now he does. Vegeta being cautioned for backhanding the referee. Dirty Fujita. Ertz comes forward. Kenny Lennon to the head kick. Muay Thai clinch and a high knee. One, two, and a body shot from Ertz. Oh, body shot again from Ertz, then goes upstairs. It's a hard draw to knock out. Body shot, liver shot from Ertz. Oh, the round kick. And Vegeta catches the kicking leg. He's going to slam him. Scoop slam. Down he goes. Ertz a shoulder up, though. Doesn't get the pin, only a two count. Vegeta. Is he going to try and put him in a submission? Is he going to try and turn him around into a Boston Crab? Yes! Ertz in trouble now! Ertz in big trouble! Is Ertz tapping out? He looks like He's it. in extreme pain! But no! Yes, oh, he's now tapping he's tapping out. out! Vegeta scores a victory! That Boston Crab, I think Ertz had tapped out previously, Mike. My God, I mean, they had to put a lot of pressure on his back. It looked, I mean, it looked like he was in agony as soon as he got put into it. Oh, yeah. Ertz still on the canvas, writhing in pain. Old iron head, Kazuyuki Vegeta. Makes Peter Ertz submit here. I think Peter is still in pain. I know he's complaining to his corner right now. Peter Ertz not in a good way here. Finally back to his feet. His face reddened, some swelling around the eyes. The legs very sore. And look at the pain on the Dutch Lumberjack's face there as he tapped out. The Boston Crab from Fujita. Ertz was tapping, no doubt about it. Yeah, actually Ertz was tapping before, before he got turned over. He was yeah. already tapping. Well, Fujita showing he has still got it. One kickboxes tonight are uh, one and one, and disappointed Ertz heads back to the change room. As Ertz goes back, a beaten man. We get set for our tag team match coming up next, folks. It is going to be Sawada and Suzukawa against Sakuraba and Shibata. I'm 
試合だったら僕と思ったら叩きそうですよね。<笑>どんなルールであれ見せてそして熱く勝つ千葉が勝つより桜が勝つ新入場
and the outcome of this match. What's going to happen here, Mike? They cannot go strength for strength moves with Suzukawa and Sawada. They've got to rely on agility. They've got to rely on high-flying techniques. They've got to rely on footwork and movement. They cannot allow Suzukawa and Sawada to basically catch up with them. Oh, and already Shibata kicking at the ropes. And Sawada entered. And Sawada going right up in the face here of Sakuraba. Wow, the smack talk early on in this one, Hearts. Uh, just in case you're wondering, that is a taper mask. T A P I R. -Z. I wasn't going to say anything, but I wouldn't be talking shit wearing that kind of mask. Kenichi Suzukawa, the Wakakirin, a former sumo wrestler who was banned from the sport for marijuana possession, achieved the rank of Mega Shira 9 in sumo, the lowest rank of the top sumo division. His sumo name, Wakakirin, translates to young giraffe. A kirin is also a mythical beast. Trains at UFW Snake Pit in Japan. Hans, tell us a little bit more about the controversial Shinichi Suzukawa. You know, there, that was actually part of a string of four or five uh, sumo wrestlers. I, I don't remember all their names, but young sumo wrestlers who were busted for possession of marijuana and, you know, consequently kicked out of the sport, which uh, a lot of people don't realize. Not only is it is it a sport that they can make a living at, but sumo wrestlers are, t are traditionally taken care of for life afterwards, too. So that could very well why be why he's pro wrestling now. A tag team match here at Dream New Year's Eve at the St. Thomas Super Arena. What a combination they are. Shibata and Sakuraba. Take on Sawada and Suzukawa. Expect to see a lot of agility, some high flying moves, some high risk maneuvers from Shibata and Sakuraba. Expect the power moves from Sawada and Suzukawa. Now the question is, which combination will we see up first? Will Sakuraba start? And will he take on the powerhouse Sawada? Or will it be Shibata and Suzukawa? It looks like Sawada is ready to come out first. He's a big boy. Atsushi Sawada. It looks like Shibata. Well, now, Suzukawa looks like he wants to start the match. A stand down here with Shibata. Maybe this will be our first combination. So, words here between Sawada and Suzukawa. I think Shibata wants to be the first to go from Team Sakuraba Shibata. Referee does his final checks. Or Team Sakuraba. That'll do. And it looks like we are going to see Suzukawa. Indeed, Suzukawa and Shibata. And Suzukawa comes charging out of his corner. High kick from Shibata. Open fist strikes. Outside thigh kick from Suzukawa. Shibata backed up momentarily, goes to the ground. Nice slap it was. Palm strike there from Suzukawa. Old Pancrase style. Shibata, round kick, looking for the midsection. 
Shibata's yeah, got to keep moving. He gives away a huge weight differential to Suzukawa. Nice right hand from Shibata. Step across outside thigh kick. He may have taken a thumb to the eye. Yeah, he looks like he got poked in the eye, but so far he's doing really well. You know, he's moving around the ring. Good open palm strike. Suzukawa backed up. Sakuraba smacking that up here. Sakuraba can get one in, but the referee doesn't see it. The tag's been made by Shibata. Underhooks here for Suzukawa. We're going to see a bit of a double team. Oh, nice stomp there from Shibata. And he comes in and makes a save. The Sawada. And now we've got all four men in the ring. The referee needs to get some control here. The legal men in are Suzukawa and Sakuraba. Jay Shibata and Sawada back on the aprons in their respective corners. Sakuraba and Suzukawa, the legal man. So we get our first look at Sakuraba in wrestling action for the first time since the year 2000. I think that was perhaps a little joke about him doing MMA for so long that he's forgotten the rules of uh, pro wrestling. Inside five kick from Sakuraba. Now the trademark of Sakuraba, the low single, that's when he gets there and tanks down Suzukawa. In half guard here, Sakuraba forearm across the throat. Hey, Sakuraba's doing a good job there, going for a key lock. But what about this rope thing? The referee's telling Sakuraba, you've got to come away from the ropes. And he tells him to break. Smart move from Suzukawa, hanging onto the ropes here while Sakuraba was looking for his patented submissions. Sakuraba didn't look very happy to break on that one. Suzukawa may be setting a right hand here. Sakuraba so inventive as he is in his mixed martial arts career. High left round from Sakuraba, upends himself. Tries to go for a low single and a round kick there from Suzukawa. Referee. Sawada now, having made the tag, is the legal man in. Goes for a double slap off the right tag, made to Shibata. So Sakuraba sent out onto the apron. Shibata, the legal man in. Oh, jumping kick missed the target for Sawada. Now a bit of double teaming. And looks like Suzukawa's going to come in here to save his partner, and he does a flying kick. All four men in the ring again. Referee losing control here. Shibata and Suzukawa going at it. Meanwhile, the legal men in are still Sawada and Shibata. Oh, slap from Shibata. Oh, Sawada with a headbutt. That's a handful of hair. Headbutt didn't face Shibata too much. Referee having some trouble keeping these four men in line. And Shibata resets himself, still clutching that eye that he caught the thumb in earlier on. Rico Roman knuckle lock here. Test of strength. Does he want to play this game with Sawada? Sawada pulls the head down. Handful of hair here. Referee cautioning him to let go. Is he going to go for a headbutt? Is he going to go for an open palm strike? And Shibata out of danger momentarily. Sawada resets himself. This massive man. Shibata probing. And again, knuckle lock. Need to the midsection, perhaps? No. Hey, Dutch! Hey! Sakuraba tagged in. Outside thigh kick from Sawada. And the referee motioned Shibata out of the ring. Sakuraba did make the tag. Sakuraba shoots in for a low single. Both legs now in control. Sakuraba, top position. Shibata looking to come in. So too is Suzukawa to make any save necessary. Up strike there from Sawada. Got to be careful not to drop those two shoulders down or he'll be counted here. Atsushi Sawada. Sakuraba applying pressure. Maybe looking for a submission. Yes. He goes to work, Mike, on that right leg. Yeah, he's got a pretty mean ankle lock here. Goes to the ropes, must break the hold here, Sakuraba. It may be time for Sawada to make a tag to Suzukawa. Sawada not having a good spell at the moment, grabs a handful of hair, and Sakuraba drops down again, takes the angle. Oh, that was pretty, got straight in for it. Too close to the ropes, he went to the other corner, and Suzukawa was there to make the save. Nice kick from Sawada, Suzukawa now the legal man in. 
Holding the ropes here, Sakuraba. And the referee's going to allow Saku up. Much to the delight of the fans here at the Saitama Super Arena. Sakuraba still holding on to the rope here. Glances over to Shibata. So Suzukawa, the fresh man in. Sakuraba continues to hold on to the top rope. Doesn't want to engage quite yet. Now the referee insists. And he tags in Shibata. Shibata, the younger, the fresher. Shibata and Suzukawa. Oh, slap fest! A slap fest in centre ring. Shibata goes down. Well, he drew the short straw of that exchange. Turning back kick from Shibata. And again, Suzukawa doing his pitch slapping burst. Left hand from Suzukawa. Shibata calling him forward. A Bruce Lee-like stance. Lazy front kick, though. Got to be careful not to leave that leg lingering in the air. And Suzukawa, the powerhouse, the former sumo wrestler. Let's see what happens if these two clinch up. You can see Shibata deliberately maintaining his distance. He does not want a body clinch with Suzukawa. And Sawada tacked in. The big man. Turning back kick, looking for the liver from Shibata. Sawada just walks through it. Grabs a handful of hair. Oh, hit back between the eyes. Nicely down. And again, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wow, he pounded him to the canvas. Eleven headbutts in a row from Atsushi Sawada. Where's the Tylenol for Shibata? Somehow, he looks at a tie clinch here. Hands locked around the back of the head, working the knees. They have no effect though on Sawada. And Sawada just smiles at him. This is a big hunk of humanity. This is... I'm speechless. I'm just listening to you, watching them. This is... This is... Unbelievably entertaining. Well, as Shibata recovers from his headache, Sakuraba in the ring now with Sawada. Inside leg kick, Saku drops down for a single nice sprawl out from Sawada. Inside half guard, top position, the big man. Sakuraba cannot allow Sawada to posture up here and start landing some blows. There was a two count there as momentarily both shoulders on the canvas. Now Sakuraba inside the legs here of Sawada. Sakuraba goes to half guard. Controlling the wrist is Sawada, not allowing any ground and pound. Just a one count. Went for the pin, Sakuraba. Can make the tag here, Suzukawa. Foot on ropes. And Suzukawa just pointing it out to the referee, so Sakuraba forced to break the hold here. It's not mixed martial arts. Sakuraba cannot be dragged towards center of the ring to continue. They must break the hold. And Sawada wisely tags in Suzukawa. Crafty fighters here. Suzukawa probing with his hands. Sakuraba, nice inside bike kick, good at high on the thigh. For that femoral artery. Shibata looking for a way in here. Good high forearms check against the round kick from Sawada. I should say Suzukawa. Sakuraba, patient, taking his time, hands on hips as he resets. The IQ wrestler. Suzukawa seems a little weary, a little concerned at the inventiveness of Sakuraba that he's renowned for. You know that if you leave a limb out there for too long, Sakuraba's going to tie it up and tap you out. It's a scary, scary prospect for a former Sumatori. Low kick there from Sakuraba below the neck. Sakuraba's reflexes still quick here. Just scooping out and parrying those slap attempts from Suzukawa. Makes a tap to Sawada. The judoka. Judoka versus catch wrestler. They just announced we are now 10 minutes in. Sakuraba looks to take the back and he does. Ooh, that's a big man. Oh, you saw the judo technique coming to play there from Sawada. Mount position now for Sakuraba. 
What can Saku do from here? Put on ropes. Shibata across the ring just screaming as momentarily Suzukawa charged across. Referee shoving Suzukawa back out onto the apron. Foot on ropes here though from Sawada. Sakuraba's gonna have to break the hold. Referee sees it now. Gives Sakuraba a slap at a tickle and says to break. A marathon match here. Sakuraba fists up nice and high. Ooh, a double chop there from Sawada. We're gonna bring the edges of the hands, the knife hand down onto the shoulder blades. Sawada probing with his right. Sakuraba a little bit too slick for him at the moment. Drills that kick into the carcass. Hefty paunch of Atsushi Sawada. Oh, Sakuraba looked downstairs, went upstairs. Beautiful work. The eyes went down to the knees, but the foot went up to the head. Did he make a tag here, Sawada? He's not in good shape. And Shibata has been tagged in. So too, Suzukawa. Oh, jumping drop kick. Shibata gets airborne. And Sawada didn't like that as he was on his way out. Shibata and Suzukawa now. Shibata also highly inventive. Trains with Sakuraba at the Laughter 7 gym. He's basically modeled himself after Sakuraba as a wrestler and a fighter. He's considered kind of a protege of the Sakurabas. Both men grabbing a handful of hair, a handful of dreadlocks there for Shibata. Forearm across the throat. Sawada in. Big right hand from him. Oh, round kick from Sawada. Referee's got to get some control here. It's getting out of hand. Sawada should not be in here. Made the tag, Suzukawa out, Sawada in. The referee needs to be on top of this. A lot of bad blood between these two teams. Shibata. Oh, nice skip kick. Triple kick it was. A little bit of Taekwondo stylings there from Shibata. Well, we've seen Shibata, if he wins tonight, to celebrate in his usual style of getting drunk and taking his clothes off. Oh, nice work from Shibata. Good knee. Muay Thai clinch and the high knees again. And this is not where Sawada wants to be. Oh, front kick to the face. Beautifully done from Shibata. And Sizakawa just rolls out of the ring. Oh, flying kick. Smack bang between the eyes. How is Sawada still standing? Sakuraba takes his back, gets him on the canvas. Sawada in a whole world of bother. Cranking that neck now, Sakuraba. Sakuraba wants to finish him here. Referee keeping a close eye on it, but no. Suzukawa looks for a save, doesn't get it. He'll have to do better than that. A second kick, but Sakuraba holding on like a leech. It's over. It may be over. Is Sawada out here? The referee trying to try and lose all pandemonium in the ring. Officials are in. The corners are in. All hell's broken loose here. It's pandemonium. It's a street fight in the ring. There must be 15 men in there. Sawada is a race. He doesn't know where he is. Let's go. We'll jump in there too. The referee is pushing Sawada. Wow, that was an all-out riot. That was like a melee going on. Wow. They're Look. still going at it here. Sakuraba better get out of the ring. That's Hideki Suzuki in there too. Oh, Sawada going after Sakuraba. Suzukawa having a shot at Sakuraba. What's happened here? What's happened to Shibata? He all injured his mess. leg. He's laid out on the concrete floor. Now the cornermen are getting stuck into Sawada. Sawada will not relent. Oh, Sakuraba from behind. Now Suzukawa. Sakuraba still parading here. Suzukawa and Sawada just looking to nail Saku from behind. Shibata seems okay. He's back up onto the apron. Absolute pandemonium. It looks like a battle royale. And still look at Sawada trying to throw blows over the top rope. 
is for the happy camper. Susakawa being restrained by his cornerman. Shibata, a damage left arm. Sakawa went to the ropes after Sakuraba. Crazy scenes here. Crazy, crazy scenes. Salada just whipped what looked like a round timer uh, through it at uh, Yeah, he did. Things are, things are really starting to get out of control. There's gang members with face masks to each side. The Bellacarva class corner. Oh, Sakawa has his thumbs back to the change room. Sakuraba, his ear intact. Is a victor here tonight. Man, we need to get some security around here. Yeah, this is uh, for us. Look at this. Sawada still has not left the ringside area. He is still absolutely smoking. Angry and irate. Oh, it's Susik. Oh, Sawada is trying. Oh, Sakuraba, better be careful here. Sawada's trying to get a chair. Oh, no. Sawada with the chair. A cheap shot. Sakuraba giving a speech. Sawada with the chair. That's got seven security men trying to restrain this behemoth. Crazy, Mike, just crazy. Oh, he's grabbed another chair. He's coming towards us, Mike. He's grabbing chairs from ringside here, Sawada. Yeah. And look at this, one, two, three, four, five security guards. He's coming Sawada right at us, Mike. Right. Is this supposed to be happening? This What's man's going crazy. Out here? This man is a nutcase. Hold on. I don't know if this is part of the script, Mike. Is this supposed to be happening? Because it's no. not. He's I'm out of control. I'm punch somebody. out of control. That is one angry giant Japanese guy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> wow, how about that? <laughs> Sawada just losing the plot here. Lovely Dream Ring Girls are doing their thing as uh, ringside. They're still cleaning up the mess made here by Sawada, who absolutely lost the plot. Those were just crazy scenes. Mike, have you ever seen anything like that before? That was nuts. I didn't know if this was supposed to be happening. If we should uh, run for I, I cover. Know. It was scary there I for mean, a moment because that was... he grabbed one chair, ran towards Sakuraba, then he came right yeah, next to and us. The whole thing started coming. He literally threw three ringside patrons off of their chairs, grabbed the chairs and started hurling them into the crowd. And coming towards us. Amazing, absolutely amazing. As uh, I'm a man who lives up to his bets. There you have it. Eyeshadow and the lipstick. I'm a man who honors his bets. So Never, Mikey, argue. Congratulations. Never argue with the big dog, because the big dog is always right. Hey, I look like adorable Adrian Adonis. It's all uh, good for me. That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> I tell you what, though, the pandemonium that was pro wrestling here tonight was highly entertaining. It has now come to an end, which means we really do move into the business end of our car because coming up next, Leon Takeshi takes on Takaya. How do you see that one going down, Mike? I mean, you know, as I said in the, uh, in the openers, I see it, I, I really see it going towards Takeshi. I mean, he's on a three fight winning streak. He had a devastating knockout of Karo Uno at the last dream. I mean, just knocked him out cold. Um, Takaya. It's been kind of an up and down. You know, he's been successful here in the U.S., but he did lose in, uh, I'm sorry, he lost in, 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 the, U, uh, in the U.S. against uh, Prater and Strikeforce. He did all right against Miata. I thought Miata actually won that fight. So I'd have to say the momentum is, is definitely on Takeshi's side. And his experience going the way of Takeshi Inoue, the age three years, the elder Takeya, 5'6 versus 5'8, slight weight advantage going the way of Takeya. Then in our co-main event, of course, Shinya Aoki and Satoru Kitaoka, and then the big one, Emilianenko, takes on Satoshi Ishii. Kitayoka and Aoki, as Han said before, a complicated relationship. Former Sengoku champion takes on current dream champion. This could be the fight of the night in a night that has produced a lot of stellar fights. Then, of course, our main event, the return of the last emperor. Last seen here at Yarinoga many moons ago against Hongman Choi. He returns to a place where many feel 
he truly belongs. Fedor Emelianenko, 32 and 4, comes in 1-3 in his last four. Ten years the elder of Satoshi Ishii. And also the weight advantage going the way of Emelianenko. Satoshi Ishii weighing at 214.7, a little lighter than we expected. Folks, another intermission time when we return here to the Saitama Super Arena live on HDNet. Three fights remain, including Aoki and the Last Emperor. Welcome back to Saitama Super Arena in Japan. 25,000 plus here for this New Year's Eve epic event. And what a night we've seen kickboxing action, mixed martial arts action, and pro wrestling. It has all been happening. Well, Mike, what a second portion of the card. We saw Maha Sakurai versus Rio Chonin. We saw Kawajiri in action, and I think that was one of Kawajiri's most impressive performances in a long time. Kawajiri looked absolutely phenomenal. I mean, he's looked like that at 145 against both uh, Hanson and this time against Miata, but what was most impressive was his timing for the takedowns and his ability to just pretty much take an Olympic level wrestler uh, down at will. And then of course his, his spectacular finish. I mean, Kawajiri looked great. And how about Megumi Fuji over Carla Benitez? That's why they call her the queen of the quick kill. Megumi Fuji was awesome, and once again, Mike, she shows why she is one of, if not the greatest, women's mixed martial artists of all time. Oh, phenomenal. I mean, how smooth were her transitions? She, you know, she she went for a takedown. Uh, Carla actually stuffed it, and then from there, I don't really know what happened, but we ended up with a spectacular arm bar. I mean, phenomenal, phenomenal performance. Folks, let's take a look at some of the replays from what we saw in the middle portion of tonight's card. Rio Chonin entered the ring to take on Maha Sakurai. Sakurai with Matt Hume in the corner. Both men traded strikes, lots of kicks, lots of punches. This was a rematch from many moons ago. Maha Sakurai pounding away as he is one to do. Ground and pound from Maha. Rio Chonin tried his best with some single shots, but never really turned the knuckles in enough. Never really got the power behind the shots. And eventually Maha Sakurai ending up in the winner's circle yet again. A much needed victory for Sakurai who came in on quite a long losing streak. The crusher, Tatsuya Kawajiri in a new weight class that I believe he will dominate. Took on little Hercules, Kazuyuki Miyata. From the get-go, Kawajiri was in control, Mike. Yeah, I mean, right, right off the bat, you know, he took, he took Miyata down virtually within 30 seconds or the so the opening round and dominated from there got into a mounting mounting position did some ground and pound but really it was in the second round when he started opening up you know they exchanged a little bit of the punches then went straight to the ground and then he got the head and arm triangle and just finished it off within 10 seconds before the end of the round Kawajiri will he get that crack in America I sure hope so well, it was the best entrance of the night so far. Unfortunately for Carla Benitez, it lasted longer than her fight against Megumi Fuji. It didn't take long, did it, Mike, for Fuji to work her match? No, not at all. Actually, it wasn't until this replay that I just saw. She didn't stuff the takedown. Fuji actually dove in Imanari-style, Hans, as you said. Um, and then from there, went, went straight to doing her work. And, I mean, set up a beautiful armbar. Carla rolled. She had it locked in tight and... And went for the finish. Uh, an amazing, amazing performance. I'm hearing that she has some knee problems, which might have been why she had trouble uh, hitting that double leg and went the Imanari route instead of her usual pretty crisp takedowns. Beautiful human being, fantastic fighter. Megumi Fuji, one of the nicest ladies you'll ever meet. Pro wrestling time again, Josh Barnett against Hideki Suzuki. And Mike, I said it earlier. After seeing Barnett for the first time live pro wrestling, I like him as a pro wrestler. I want to see him do more pro wrestling because the moves he pulled off and the transitions were just phenomenal. I mean, both of these guys, really, this match was, you know, the most action-packed of the night as far as pro wrestling is concerned. I mean, the transitions from submission to submission to submission to footlocks to sweeps to takedowns, and they had a lot of takedown reversals. It was, it was a really, really... Uh, you know, action-packed, phenomenal match. I was very impressed with uh, with Barnett's athleticism. I mean, we knew him as a great fighter, but I didn't even realize he's this athletic. They, they were more active than a lot of guys half their size, honestly. 
I mean, out of the wrestling matches we've seen so far tonight, this was the choice one, Mike. This one was definitely, I mean, this last one was pretty, pretty exciting, especially at the end there with the whole melee going around. But as far as, you know, pure uh, 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 styles and, and technique, I, I think this one now, really the showed it. craziest portion of the night, Antonio Inoki, Tiger Singh, Cracking Inoki over the head with a stick, but Inoki, no retaliation after he came in on a cross. It was very I, weird. We I had did get some confirmation. Okay, about Hans, you, you uh, did finally earn your wage, <laughs> did you? I, well, I, th this is all based on events that happened like in the 70s before I was born. But uh, apparently Tiger Singh's uh, partner just died, and then Inoki was talking about that, and then he came out, and you saw all the, the aftermath there, hitting him with the Shinai and all that. And the reason I'm wearing makeup at the moment, folks, no, not because I like it, because this man, Kakuno, beat Gionotsu Nagashima in a mixed rules match. And Kogan and I had a bet that the loser would wear eyeshadow and lipstick for the remainder of the card. You're about to see how it went down. The opening round of this mic was electrifying. Fireworks. I mean, you know, we already know that Nagashima is a slugger. If you get him into a slugfest, he will slug it out with you. Uh, no doubt in that. But Kikuno really surprised me with, with his head movement and his willingness to trade. I mean, we had two eight counts within the first three minutes of the very first round. Kikuno was landing some great uppercuts, and I mean, it was a really action-packed fight. These guys did not stop. And then come the second round, it all, you know, they picked up right where they left off in the first round, but Kikuno was able to get Nagashima on the ground, take his back, flatten him out, and then just ground and pound him until the referee has seen enough and put a stop to this. And he thank God looked, he did. Holly, just like like a bobblehead here, Giannotsu. And Kikuno took the victory. Kogan won the bet. Bibiano Fernandez and Antonio Banduelas in the final of the Bantamweight Grand Prix. Banduelas came in looking pumped. But I'm telling you, Mikey, Bibiano Fernandez is on another level, along with Kawajiri, a guy I want to see have a crack on some of the leagues over in the U.S. Yeah, I mean, Bibiano looked very sharp all night. I mean, he was right on point. And, and even here, you know, he took advantage of a, of a slip-up from Banuelos, within, and he ended up falling to his back, and he really jumped on top of him and really took advantage of it and just did not want to let him back up. Banuelos ate a few, and he just really could never get anything kind of defense going from the ground. And Benio, uh, and I'm sorry, and Bibiano, of course, uh, well deservingly wins his second title in two different weight classes now in both both in tournaments. Jerome Labana, they may call wrestling fake, but there was nothing fake about some of these kicks from Labana. They left huge imprints on the body of Tim Sylvia. And you know what, Mike? I've seen Labana and commentated most of his K1 fights, and you know he was still throwing some of these kicks at around 65, 70, 75 percent. No, 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 he was throwing. I mean, him and Peter Arts. I think they forgot to get the memo about the entertaining part of this uh, of this encounter because I mean they came out blasting uh, both him and Peter Arts. And we're watching Peter Arts now. I mean, Peter Arts wasn't holding any punches from Fujita. High kick knocked him. Fujita had to get out of the ring just to regain, you know, his composure. And here was the beginning of the end. Fujita putting on a Boston Crab on Peter Arts. Arts in a lot of pain. He was tapping out here. The referee didn't see it. And now, forced yeah, he to was tap tapping out. well be yep. way before he got turned over. Under the rules, though, he has to tap three times for him to stop it. So that could have been why. Well, oh, he was tapping. Back in the winner's circle, two veterans getting it on. He definitely wanted to tap for sure. Then after this came the pandemonium, of course, of the tag team match: Sawada, Suzukawa, Sakuraba, and Shibata. That tape is being reviewed by the authorities, apparently. <laughs> because those chair shots from Sawada. They're trying to figure out. I don't think, Mike, once again, I don't think that was scripted. Because as I said, just to put it out for the fans, and maybe our, our cameraman here can give us some direction. We're sitting here. Sawada grabbed the chair from this ringside position. Just turn the camera over here. This ringside position here. Threw these ringside spectators off their chairs, grabbed the chair, threw it into the crowd, grabbed another one, and went back to Sakuraba. Well, before he did that, from the rink, he actually grabbed uh, the referees, uh, the judges' uh, time, I mean, a uh, 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 timer, and threw and it threw across. It I mean, you can't script that. There's people sitting here. God knows who he's going to hit. I mean, like I said, at one point when he started coming here towards the chair, I was like, should we run? Should we try to punch him? I mean, is this supposed to be going on? It like, was crazy. Like, it was crazy. But you know, that's what I love about Japanese pro wrestling. They do it so oh, differently. We and we're seeing some of the replays. Look at the pandemonium here. Sawada just losing the plot. Now, Sakuraba was giving his speech, and Sawada went after him. 
This was just crazy. We're going to go to another break, folks. It is too much to handle even for us. We'll take a short break and be back with more Dream New Year's Eve here at Saitama. Up next, Inoue versus Hiroyuki Takeya, the Bancho Street Fighter. Welcome back to HDNet Fights Dream New Year 2011. And now for the 15th match. Aokonayori, challenger, Ryo Takeshi Senshiro, Yujou desu.
three fights left on this epic Dream New Year's Eve card. You could not ask for three stronger fights. And this one here may take the cake. Takeshi in a way took the nickname Lion to give himself courage since he lacked heart as an amateur. A 21 and 5 record the former Shuto Pacific Rim lightweight champion. Two time former Shuto lightweight champion has never been finished in mixed martial arts. What is his stock like here in Japan, Hans? Leon Takeshi. You know, he's always been a very popular fighter, especially among uh, Shuto fans. A lot of people have always said yeah, that he would make a splash. He had that setback with the loss to Miata, but, you know, Miata's really just a bad stylistic matchup for him. And we, as, as we've seen, a little bit of tweaking, and he's an extremely, extremely dangerous fighter at this weight. And he promised probably won't make it out of the first or second round. He's pretty confident that Sakai is going to be an easy KO victory for him. What a moment here, being in the business end of the card at Dream New Year's Eve. Leon Takeshi, who has beaten Carl Uno, Ruman Asato, Antonio Cavallo, Cole Miller, and he now defeat the street fight banjo. Takaya of the Street Fight Band Show, 11 wins by knockout. Representing the Waijin Tsukashi Yukai. He's been the likes of Kabalo, Hatsuhiyoki, Yoshida Maeda, Yakim Hansen, and Chase Beebe. Married to fashion model and TV personality, Maho Miura. As he walks in front of our commentary position, Takaya ready to throw it down with Takeshi. The dream featherweight champion. A 16, 9, and 1 record. Three years the older is Takaya. Two inches the taller is Takeshi. And a slight weight advantage to Takeshi. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Japanese national anthem. そして認定宣言です。笹原イベントプロデューサーお願いいたします。認定宣言。ただいまから行われます高谷博之選手対リオン武志選手の試合は12月30日ルールディレクター立ち会いのもと現在なる軽量の結果両選手ともに携帯料
続いて高谷博之選手よりドリームフェザー級チャンピオンベルの変換ですただいま佐々木大学連載にチャンピオンベルトが変換されましたこれより本日の第15試合ドリームフェザー級タイトルマッチを行います青コーナー173センチ 64.8 キロチャレンジャーリオン武志大谷翔平赤穂167センチ65キロチャンピオン Five, five minute rounds for the championship on the line. Leon Takeshi versus Sakaya. Takeshi at minus 140. Sakaya at plus 110. Michael Chevella, Hans Thompson, Mike Kogan with you. Look out for the vicious handiwork on Takaya, the street fight banjo. He's in the black trunks. Takeshi has to keep circling, and he does. Into the lead hand of Takaya. Nice footwork early on here from Takeshi. Good rib kick from Takeshi. I should say from Takaya off the lead leg. And Takaya goes to the outside lead thigh, getting an applause from his corner. Takeshi cannot afford to let Takaya find his rhythm here. He's got to start stamping some sort of authority on this bout. Takaya's corner making sure he has that left hand held high because the lion's right hand. Takaya trying to come over the top of the short right hand of his own. Takeshi breaks off. Forearm guard against the high left round kick. Each time Takaya throws that roundhouse kick, he's get, he actually gets countered with a pretty stiff jab. Step across outside, leg kick from Takaya, goes back to center ring. Takeshi faking with the right. Left hook from Takaya, no mustard behind it. Takeshi, counterclockwise as he should be going. Does not want to drift into that right hand of Takaya. Takaya continually moving to try and get his right hand into range. Just a feeling out process here. Three minutes, ten remaining. First of five. Double jab from Takaya. Takeshi has the reach. Step across outside leg kick. Didn't follow up on it. Left hook from Takaya. Takaya trying to thread that overhand right. Big KO ratio on Takaya. 11 out of 16 wins. Step across outside leg kick again. He's doing damage to the upper left thigh. Takaya trying to press him back into the neutral corner here. Takeshi threads the jam, dances off to his left. Takaya jumping right hook. Still can't catch him with a clean shot. Two minutes 15 remain in the first. Outside leg kick from Takeshi. Doesn't quite have that trajectory that Takaya gets on the same kick. Takaya overhand right. Doesn't really roll that overhand right a lot, Takaya. More so curls it off of his shoulder. Muay Thai clinch now from Takaya. Can he get the knees off? Gets one. Pulls a head down for the meet and greet, and Takeshi breaks free. Yeah, I mean, so far, you know, Takaya's been active. Takeshi, it's almost like he's timing him. He's trying to find the right rhythm. I do like the counters off the kicks. Each time Takaya kicks, Takeshi counters with a straight right or a stiff jab. Takeshi's traditionally kind of a slow starter like this. 
Yeah, it seems to be, but you know, he's not being dominated. He's not really being put in any kind of danger. It's more of like Takaya is just kind of, you know, throwing things out there. I mean, he's scoring points with the judges, but I think Takeshi is, is, is calculating and, and trying to time a lot of it. I think as we get into the later rounds, you're gonna see, uh, you're gonna see him capitalize on that. Double left hand, looking for the right finisher is Takaya. Takeshi going counterclockwise. Takaya back him into the corner. Takeshi gets out of dodge. Drips back to center ring. Good work from Takeshi. Does not want to remain a stagnant target here. No, and, and Takaya's doing a pretty good job at controlling the ring, but he's unable to trap Takeshi in, in, into any specific corner. And as you see, now he's starting to catch those legs and he's starting to counter off that. Takeshi, confident, heads a counter right hand and a hook off the right from Takaya. He's starting to put a little more mustard behind those counters. I'm thinking uh, that'll Takeshi. be that'll be the difference in this yeah. fight is who can hurt who, honestly. Both these guys are pretty tough. Yeah, Takeshi's, I mean, Takeshi, you know, he was kind of filling out the counters at first, but now he, in the last cross, he really put some mustard behind it. Shoots in for the first time, gets a takedown, does Takaya, nice and quick. Ends up inside half guard. Takeshi, looking to control the posture, puts him inside the full guard and closes it. That was a, that was a really impressive takedown. I mean, Takaya really timed that one perfect. But it was, you know, it was towards, towards the end of the rounds, and I don't know, Hans, did his corner tell him to shoot? Because, I mean, in the U.S., that would have scored a point. In Japan, really, a takedown doesn't score much unless you've passed the guard or advanced to a, a more dominant position or actually did something. I was thinking the same thing. It doesn't really help you in Japan as much as it would in the States, where that's a round stealer if you take if you get that takedown at the end. But in Japan, if you take a guy down, don't hit him, don't attempt any submissions, that's typically not going to count. Well, but I think what it might do is just send a message to Takeshi, like, hey, I can take you down also. This is mixed martial arts even though i spend the majority of the round you know kickboxing with you i will take you down if i need to so you know a lot of this is also mental i think uh you know in sending that message to the opponent right before the end of the round is hey i could take you down so relatively Kaya, easily the champion and he's wow this was right at the end double leg takedown nicely executed from takaya 26 yeah. pounds of his career takaya here tonight about number 27 for Takeshi in a way. First round, Mike, who do you see it for? I would have to give it to the champion. I mean, obviously, he was way more active. Uh, he didn't do much of a damage, but he was more active uh, than Takeshi. Second round, set for five. Championship on the line. Well, we see Takeshi pick up the pace now. Countering off the leg kick, Takaya. Look out, Takaya cuts off the ring. Puts Takeshi on the outside. A lot more movement when you're on the outside as compared to being in center ring. And Takaya does a good job of it. Stamping his authority on the center of the canvas. Well, he does, but at the same time, I don't know that Takeshi really minds being on the outside. I think part of his game plan is a lot of moving. I mean, he's doing a really good job at moving and, and forcing Takaya to chase him, which is why he can't really land any solid, you know, any power punches. Front kick from Takaya. Takeshi has that very awkward hand movement. You never know which direction his punches are going to come from. He has, does this little hopping thing with his feet, too. There it is. A little bunny hop. Circles off to his left. He's a very awkward customer to catch. Slippery, evasive, never standing still. Outside leg kick. Look for a counter right hand. Did Leon Takeshi. And he breaks free. Intriguing matchup so far. Takeya keeping the chin tucked. Very much in a Western boxing stance. Good jabs from Takeshi. Using his reach. Referee is going to tell Takeshi, you've got to lift up the work right here. Yeah, I think, you know... As long as the fighter is not stalling, which Takeshi is not, I don't think he should be warned for not throwing enough punches. I mean, you know, he's got his strategy. I'm sure he knows what he's doing and what he's trying to do. I'd say the alternative is get trapped in the corner if he's not doing what he's doing. Oh, right hand from Takeya. Double right, make it in triplicate. The champion landing the heaviest salvos yet. 
And Takeshi just shrugs him off. They go back to center ring. I think part of Takeshi's strategy is to frustrate Takaya. See, he's starting to get frustrated. That wasn't like, you know, he was trying to finish him. It was more of like, I'm tired of chasing you around this ring. And he's starting to really frustrate uh, Takaya. Takeshi with the jab. Two and a half minutes remains here in the second of five. Takaya looking for that right hook. Uppercut went so high, I heard organs play. Nice jab from Takeshi. Inside leg kick from Takaya. It's all striking contest so far. And Takaya losing in that exchange. Again, the reach of Takeshi coming into play. Old Takaya, three punch combination, and Takeshi clinches up with him. Both men can take a knock. Tight clinch here from Takaya, trying for the meet and greet. Overhand right from Takaya. You wonder if Takeshi is trying to lead Takaya into deep water here, Mike, no, and no. maybe turn it on the ladder round. No, 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 for sure. I mean, you're starting to see Takaya breathing heavier. You're starting to really see Takeshi get under his skin. I mean, Takaya's been chasing him for two rounds now, you know, without really being able to do much. And he's been the more active of the fighter, but yet it's Takaya who's bleeding out of his nose because when Takashi lands, he lands with precision and power. And I think that's what he's trying to do is get Takaya tired and get him mentally frustrated and get him to start really making mistakes and capitalize on them. Yeah, even, even Takaya's corner is getting frustrated here. He's saying, oh, you're running away too much and you should be warned and Yeah, this and see, that. this is a five-round fight. Takaya hasn't been in a five-round fight. This is really the first time the Dream has put in a five-five-minute round. Takaya bleeding from the nose. It is the volume punching of Takaya, the precision punching of Leon Takeshi. Left round from Takaya. The corner liked it, but there wasn't really much pepper behind the shot. Outside leg kick was better. No, and the high roundhouse was blocked and really placed it to Takashi's advantage because it takes a lot of energy to do that. So he's, you know, he's depleting more and more energy. Now Takashi and Sinjur in. Throws out that lazy jab. Fakes. Nice right hand lead from Takeshi. Good evasion, underhooks here, gets the takedown, does Takaya, moves to half guard. Can he work some GMP from here? Oh, knee to the tricep. There it is, two rounds down, we move into the third, Mike. Scoring, purely scoring, probably is going to uh, Takaya at this point still. You know, he's the more active of the guys, he's the one moving forward. I think long, longer term strategy, uh, I would have to give it to uh, to uh, Takashi. I think he's, he's starting to slowly get his game plan going here more successfully. I mean, as Han said, the corner is starting to shout instructions. They're getting frustrated. Takaya is visually frustrated, but he's also starting to get tired. You know, he's breathing heavy coming back. This is only the second round. He's taking some body shots. And he's taking some stiff jabs and a few, you know, pretty hard crosses to his face during an exchange. I think those are going to start to pay dividend as we get into the later round. Takashi is definitely trying to get this fight into the later round. Leon Takeshi, the challenger. Here was the takedown from Takaya at the end of the round. He got to half guard. It looked to work some ground and pound, but you see Takeshi just locked up that right arm. Again, in, in the US, that's probably big points, but here, I don't think it counts for much. He landed a couple of strikes. Well, but. it doesn't, but being that that's the only ground action you get, in, I mean, it probably does score some with the judges. Uh, is this Mitsuhiro Ishida sitting right in front of us here, Michael? Yes. Third round of five. Our championship on the line, the featherweight title. The champion Takaya in front and our unofficial scorecard. Big outside lie kick from Takaya. Coming go to canvas early in this round, earlier than the two previous rounds. So Ishida being in uh, Takaya's corner seems to indicate that wrestling is definitely part of their game plan here tonight. Well, it's not just that. I mean, they're starting to see that he's getting tired and the striking is not doing the damage that he needs uh, to win this fight. So, you know, take take him down and cruise a little bit on top. I mean, right now, basically, Takaya is not really exerting a whole lot of energy to stay on top. 
He's been looking accurate so far, Takaya. Champion trying to pass here. Almost puts his fist through the canvas. And inside the closed guard of Leon Takeshi. Little hammer fist strike, but the wrists are tied up at the moment. Now breaks free with the right arm. And once again, Takeshi locks him down. Doing a good job here, Takeshi. Takaya throws everything with bad intentions. I do like that about him. Only big right hand. Takaya getting airborne momentarily, going for the power salvo. Just uh, adjusting the tape here on the glove of Takaya. A lot of instructions in the corner of Takaya. Takeshi looks pretty fresh. It is interesting that Takaya's been attacking the whole time, but is the only one that looks bloodied up here. Well, yeah, it's because T Takeshi is, is landing with a better precision, especially with the straight punches. But, you know, we're now halfway through the third round. I think Takeshi really needs to start to pick up a little more. And, and You know, if his strategy is to tire out Takaya, he needs to, he needs to get a little more active. He Outside just, Leaky from Takaya. He can't just keep dancing around forever and throwing little pot shots. He's just not going to get the job done. So... You know, if that was his strategy, this is a good time to start turning some heat. Sakaya probing with his lead hand. Sakeshi doing the same. Who will throw the trigger? The right hand. And it's Takaya who goes to the midsection. Takeshi using the open palms to try and catch some of these flicking punches. Nothing flicking about that counter right. Ooh, see that nice dummy off the right? Poke through with the left, Takeshi. That very awkward, unorthodox stance of his. Takeo fires the right down the tube and Takeshi just got his, he his head on the inside. This is the thing that sucks about fighting a longer fighter. He's eating a steady diet of jabs. Yeah, but I mean, you know, we're, like I said, we're, we're midway through the third round. We're actually on a two minute mark of the third round and Takashi is yet to really start to pick yeah. up any kind of a, a steady pace or any kind of a, a steady oh. offense. He's kind of continuing the same way he did before. And I don't know if he's hoping Takaya will just fall over from exhaustion, but I think he can last another two rounds at this pace. Well, that's, that's another one of the big differences between this and, and U.S. MMA, too. You lose three rounds in the U.S., and you got to knock them out or knock them down at least. Big inside funky from Takaya. There's a jab from Takeshi Inoue. And now Inoue sitting behind his lead hand. Takaya, though, backs him up again. Big outside leg kick, chomping around the quadriceps. Inside thigh kick, high up in that femoral profunda. Solid work again from Takaya. Gets out of the way of the jab. Left hook, right hand, double right from Takaya. Clinches him up in the corner. And Takeshi just slips out. You know, Takeshi is missing a lot of opportunities on counters. Like, just here, he turned Takaya, he slipped out. He could have come right back with a knee. He could have come right back with a combination. But he's just disengaging and then going back to dancing around. I'm starting to think that maybe that he doesn't have a game plan. You know, he's just quick on his feet. Oh, another slick jab off the lead hand. Crack into the inside thigh. That time on the right leg from Takaya. He is putting down the points here, is the champion. Third round of five, 35 seconds on the clock. Inoue's got to get a move on with things here. Takaya too fast, beating him to the punch. Too much work rate. Gets Let's out see of the way of the that. jab. See if he goes that takedown right at the end of the round again, like he did the first two. A little bit of swelling over both eyes of Takaya as he eats a right hand on his way in from chomping that lead leg again. His rear thigh like a stock whip just cracking to the lead leg every time of Inoue. Corking knees now. End of the round. I've locked up one away for the champ, Mike. Yeah, I mean, as far as scoring is concerned, it's all going Takaya's way. Uh, you know, like I said, I mean, really, I think the fourth round is going to be a decisive round here for us to see if, if Takashi actually has a game plan or he is literally just dancing around and throwing jabs and, and you know, random crosses because in his third round, you know, 
I saw a few opportunities where he, he should have, not just could have, but should have come back with a counter. Should have come back with some knee, especially there towards the end. He, he turned him around from the corner, and instead of coming right at him uh, with some offense, he just backed away and went back to dancing. I have to agree with you there, Mike. I think if he's got a trap ready for him, he better start springing it quick, or else it's just going to end up being a decision for Takaya. Yeah, I mean, really, if, if he doesn't start doing something here in the fourth round, I'm going to be inclined to believe that that's just his game plan. You know, uh, I was kind of sucked into it uh, when I was watching uh, Mayhem Miller against... Um, uh, no, 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 uh, Jake Shields. And I kept saying, okay, Mayhem's got something, gonna, he's going to get something going, and then, you know, five rounds later, you're like, okay, Mayhem had no game plan for that fight. Okay. We've got it the champion's favor at the moment. Wherever you're watching live on HDNet, hope you're enjoying all the action of Dream New Year's Eve from St. Tama Super Arena. Takaya in the black, the defending champion. Takeshi Inoue in the white. Inoue came in as the favorite with the bookmakers. Are you surprised by that, Mike? I'm sorry? That Inoue came in as the favorite with the bookies. No, not necessarily. It is rare to see the champion, the underdog, though. Yeah, not necessarily. I mean, like I said, I picked him to win this fight, but I was expecting him to be a lot more aggressive and a lot more, uh, you know, willing to finish the fight early. I didn't expect us to be in a fourth round with him still circling and, and really not doing much damage. Sakaya already going after the chin in this round. Inouye's got to pull the trigger here. Nice Muay Thai clinch, and Inouye just gets out of it. Hard to lock up the Thai clinch at the moment, especially with the sweat on both men as we're in the latter stages of this fight. It'll be harder, too, to lock up submissions. But we haven't seen it go to ground too often. It's been mostly a glorified kickboxing contest in which Takaya, the champion, has been dominant. Tries for the Muay Thai clinch again. Could unlock it on, though, Takaya. But he is completely stalking, completely hunting down Takeshi Inoue wherever he goes around the ring, Hans. I guess one problem with game plans is the other guy always has other ideas, too. Well, it's not a matter of ideas. I mean, like I said, it's not like Takaya is not neutralizing uh, Takeshi's game plan. At this point, I don't really know what his game plan is. Like I said, he's, he's had a, a lot of missed opportunities during which he could have delivered some extra damage. He could have, there, was, there was plenty of uh, opportunities to throw some knees to the body and really get Takaya tired, you know, come in with the counters, but he's not doing anything. Have a look at this from Takaya. He wants to manhandle Takeshi. He wants to brawl. And Takeshi, as we said, so resilient, can take a knock. Again, Takeshi faking with the right hand, not pulling the trigger, and Takeya making him pay. Yeah, might as well just throw it. Now we go to ground, but Takeya back to his feet straight away and throws another right. He's got more rights than Amnesty International as we tick down final seconds of this round. Takeya in complete control here. It's going to take a 180 change in game plan for Takeshi to turn this around, Mike. Well, at this point, I mean, it's going to take a haymaker knockout punch to really uh, be able to win this fight. I mean, Takaya has been able to establish this, the pace of the fight and dictate the place, you know, kind of like the, the theme of the fight from the very beginning of the first round. But I was under the impression that that was playing into Takashi's game plan. And he was just trying to suck him into deep waters and get him tired. Well, get him tired, he did. Bloody him up, he did. But that's about it. Oh, left hook from Takaya. Two minutes remaining in this round. Takaya trying to back him into a corner, trying to cut off the ring. And it's been combination work with the hands from Takaya. Not just relying on the single shot. Look at the way he sits behind the jab. He's going to set up the big tub thumping right hand. And Takeshi still on the back foot. Step across outside thigh kick from Takaya. Doing a number on that lead leg. Now Takeshi's looking a little bit tired. Mouth open, not moving as quick. Right hand from Takaya after a left hook. The old 3-2 kangaroo. And Takeshi doing nothing. Outside leg kick again. Takaya just measures him. Fires a Mike Eddy to the midsection. This is all one-way traffic. His eyes may be closing up here, Takaya, but he's not slowing down. He's increasing his volume, increasing his output, with 60 seconds remaining in the round. And uh, 
Takeshi issued a yellow card here. You know, I was I was kind of judgmental of uh, uh, the referee warning uh, Takeshi early on in the fight, but I think at this point it's well justified. I mean, this guy's not really fighting. He, he didn't come here to fight. He just came here to dance and throw punch, throw jab. Um, I, for one, am very disappointed. I mean, like, you know, when you get a chance to fight for a title and the champion is giving you the opportunity to fight him, you know, and engage with you, you got to go after and try to take the title. Oh, look at this! Three punches from Takeya! And still nothing from Takeshi in a way. Stephen Hawking is more active than Takeshi in a way. He's got to do something here. Uppercut almost took out the ring lights. The crowd rallying behind the street fight Bancho as the champ looks to finish. 15 seconds remaining in the round. Liver shot from Takaya. He has just dominated, just pulverized. Oh, big right hand, a gobble blood flew out of the noggin. What a round for the champion. Takeshi in a way has no answers, Mike. None, and, and you know, I mean, I mean, I'm starting to get inclined to believe that, that he came in here without any answers or really without trying to pose any questions. I mean, I, I'm really not sure, you know, maybe he's injured, you know, whatever his story might be. He's definitely not in this title fight. I mean, he's been doing the same thing since round one, and now we are in round four. Unless this man possesses some phenomenal one-punch knockout power and he's planning on pulling that off in the last 10 seconds, you know, just for the shock factor, I mean, I really don't know how this man is going to win this fight. Sakaya just dominating in all aspects. Make it nice, use those leg kicks to shut down what was previously some nice footwork from Takeshi and keep him in place so he can lay that leather on him. It was nice footwork, Hans, but it's only good footwork if you can follow it through with strikes. It's no use just playing a cat and mouse game where you're running away from your opponent. Absolutely. You've got to use the footwork to set up the striking, and Inoue just hasn't done that. Hence the yellow card from the referee. You can be active in that you're moving around the ring for four rounds straight, but if you're not throwing back, you're not going to score points. You're not going to entertain the fans. You're not going to win the championship. No, not at all. You're not going to win. You know, you're not going to win a, 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 a comeback for a title fight here anytime soon either. I mean, like I said, there's so many able fighters at 145 that would love the chance to fight for a title. When you come to the title fight, you come hungry. And and Taka uh, uh, Takashi is not showing that hunger here at all. And have a look at Takaya again. All over him in the fifth and final round, cracking to that leg. Takaya, left hook, continues to hunt down Takeshi. Takeshi still hasn't thrown anything in this round. Now he gets a half-hearted sloppy leg kick off. This is a great angle here. You can just see Takaya trying to walk him into the corner. Yeah, I mean, Takaya, sorry, Takaya is still trying to finish this fight. And I mean, you know, he can, he can pretty much cruise this round and short of a knockout, it will be impossible for him to lose it. But he's still the one that's trying to finish the fight. He's still the one that's... High clinch to the high knees from Takaya as he tangos with Takeshi. Just showing great control. That's the puzzle of the tie clinch. You control the head, you control the body, you control the entire motion of your opponent. It was a nice display there from Takaya. Three minutes 40 remaining. It is all for Takeshi in a way to do. But has he got anything left? Can he pull a rabbit out of the proverbial hat? I don't see a rabbit, Mike, and I don't see a hat. Not at all, but, I, you know, the worst of all, I don't see the desire to pull it out. Really, I mean, I never thought I would say this, but I'm watching a fight in which one of the guys just does not want to fight. I mean, he just doesn't want to fight. I don't know why why even bother coming in. It's, it's very, very disappointing. Sakaya gets back to his feet, tries to thread the knee. Anyway, looking to break off, eats an uppercut as he gets out. Right there's a perfect example. I mean, he does a great job to turn the corner and put Takaya, you know, uh, and just against the, and then he just lets him out. Instead of pushing him into the into the corner and start delivering some knees, he just lets him out. I mean, it's terrible. Takaya continues to walk him down. At, and in a way, continues to do nothing. He drifts off to center ring. Still does not fire out first. The corner of Inouye about to burst a blood vessel. They continue to yell at their man, but there's just nobody home. 
No, the light's not switching on. Yeah, I would love to, you know, to know exactly what is it that you're changing. Him. Wilson is just screaming how much time is left. Yeah, it seems like they're not really saying a whole lot. I mean, it's Tobias Cole is the one that's doing all the yelling. Tell you what, for a man who... Getting some moves. For a man who named himself Lion because he lacked heart. When was the last well, time we heard you somebody know what? booed? I'm, I'm going to call him a tin man now because he's got no heart. He's not doing anything here. And the crowd is booing hearts. Right, that's very rare in Japan. He gets clipped with a nice right hand body shot from Takaya. And I've got to give credit to Takaya Mike. He hasn't slowed down his work rate. At he could all. have just coasted up the third, third round. At all. I mean, Takaya has not slowed down at all, despite the fact that it's obvious Takashi is not here to take his title, is not even trying to. You know, to Takaya, it's almost like he's on a mission. You know, he's trained for this fight, and he's come in, and he's going to show uh, that he can dominate all five rounds. And you know what? As a champion, that is, you know, that's in a way what he's supposed to do also. You know, this is his belt, and he's trying to make a statement here, not just to Takashi, but to any other uh, you know, people in line, you know, fighters in line to take his title or to challenge him for his title. That hey, I can go five rounds and I can keep it up for five rounds. But Tan not turning the knuckles in for Takeshi in a way, goes to the body, then ahead to Takaya. Under a minute remaining in the championship bout. Now, does Takeshi have a Hail Mary shot? Has he got a miracle in his hands or his legs? Oh, I don't see it. I don't think Takaya sees it. I don't think Takaya respects anything that has come from the legs or hands of Takeshi here tonight. No, not at all. And I mean, you, you know, it's obvious that, uh, you know, it's not even a matter of does he have it in him to do it? Does he have the desire to do it? I mean, you know, at some point, man, you just start throwing down. I mean, you're a fighter, you know what I mean? At some point, you just say, you know what? The hell with everything. We're going for broke here. You know, this is my chance to win the title. Takashi has shown absolutely no interest and in winning this title The thing that gets me, Mike, and we were saying earlier how Takeshi is showing no heart in his previous fights. We've seen him show tremendous heart. Now we see it here from Takeshi. This is what we needed to see earlier on. The yeah. guts, the intestinal fortitude, the heart Takeshi is renowned for. But far oh, yes. too little, too late. Very disappointing performance. I mean, really disappointing performance. And I, like I said, I picked him to win. The guy was coming in on a three-fight win streak. All three fights won by KO. You know, he, he brutally KO'd Kara Ono in his last fight. He was a veteran in MMA. I really picked him to win. And, and in reality, it's not even that he lost. He just didn't even try. And that's very disappointing. I have to say the most disappointing thing is like that. When you got a guy 30 seconds to go jabbing, throwing know, leg kicks. And just leaving it to the, right to the last moment. I mean, as you said, Hans, the corner was calling for Takeshi to just go for it. If nothing else, go out on your shield. Yeah. Don't come back to that corner. <laughs> yeah. Well, Takaya will retain the championship here. Looked like he did hurt him with that last flurry, but like you said, it was, I mean, just. And Hans, you've got to ask the question, what if he had picked up the pace two rounds ago and put one of those flurries on Takaya? Even we two may have seen, ago. exactly, we may have seen a different contest. I'm a fan of both guys, but yeah, Takeshi, very disappointing tonight. This is a no-brainer. And Takaya retains the title. His record now, 17, 9, and 1. Takeshi can take a knock. I'll give him that. But he will rue the missed opportunity here tonight. He will watch the video back and think to himself, I'm sure, what the hell was I doing? Takeo stayed busy from the opening bell. He didn't overextend himself. He did not slow down and coast and wrestle his laurels when he could have easily at the third round onwards. A deserving featherweight champion. That leg kick was an absolute treat. And Sasahara san is about to present the belt yet again to Takaya. A 
very deserving winner is Takaya. Takeshi is going to have to work hard if he wants another crack at the title or in time with the future, Mike. It's not going to come easily. No, it's not. I mean, really, you know, at this point, he's going to have to do some miracles because I don't think he's deserving of a title fight. I mean, you don't, you know, it's, it's, it's such a rarity to get a title fight and just to waste the opportunity. I mean, like I said, I don't know, maybe there's something wrong with him. Maybe he's injured or, you know, whatever. But, you know, you suck it up and you try to fight. Um, especially when you had so many opportunities to actually do some damage and instead you chose to just not do it and basically just be evasive the whole fight. So the applause for Takaya, the champion, retains the strap. The St. Tama Super Arena, what a sight it is! What are we now, about seven, almost eight hours into this show as we come to our co-main event. Shinya Aoki and the killer koala, Satoru Kitsayoka. Welcome back, Fight Fans. You're watching HDNet Fights. Dream New Year 2011. The St. Tama Super Arena. We've got two fights remaining on this stacked Dream New Year's Eve card. And coming up next, Shinya Aoki takes on Satoru Kitayoka, former Sengoku champion against current Dream champion. We have just seen Takaya retain his featherweight championship against a disappointing Leon Takeshi. And also still to come here tonight, our main event, Fedor Emelianenko and Satoshi Ishii. It has been a marathon night so far, folks. Two more fights remaining. The two that everybody has been talking about. It is just about to hit 11 p.m. here in Tokyo. No one has left the arena, except for Hideo Tokoro, who we are assured is okay after that very heavy knock he took at the start of the night. And let's now see Aoki Kitayoka.
の道でただ生き残るためにする前に思ったんですけど、まあ、僕が勝つことによって、彼の肩の位置を取れるんだろうなと思ってます。あのね、あの付き合いがなかったんですけど、終わったら友達に戻れるなとか、そういう感じの形では戦えない。トップを取ろうとしてしまったら、肉親でも戦えない。一つの終わり。Take a look at that video, and you don't need to speak or read Japanese to understand the emotion coming through there. Yeah, very, very moving. I thought it was a nice touch. They, they uh, went and talked to Yuki Nakai, who's also here tonight, and uh, he actually gave both of them their black belts in, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So that's kind of interesting to get his take on it. You know, he said it's, it's weird seeing them fight each other, and both Kutaoka and Naoki said, you know, we might not be friends after this. This could change everything. This could be the last station. Last stop, basically. The man with the crazy eyes. He could make a stripper nervous with that look. And he is in tremendous shape. Satoru Kitayo going a four fight winning streak. 15 wins by a submission, eight by a leg lock, six by a guillotine. Has only been stopped three times in 47 professional fights. He's beaten Gomi, Clay Fresh, Mitsuoka, Carlos Condit, Keith Pellegrino, Paul Daly. He has submitted all of it. 
he beat Aoki Mike? Well, his stand-up is, is definitely inferior to even Aoki's, who's not a great kickboxer himself. Uh, submission. I mean, he has to, you know, he has to submit him. It, truth be said, if there's anybody who really knows Aoki's game inside out, his, his possible weaknesses, if Aoki has any weaknesses on the ground, and his strength, it would be Kitaoka because they trained together. They didn't just train together, they mentored each other, they supported each other. I mean, as we saw in the video, you know, so if anything, he would know if there's anything to be exploited. Baka survivor Shinya Aoki, a Tobi Khan Judah, master of flying submissions, 19 of his 29 wins have been by a submission. On a six fight win streak undefeated so far in 2011, he's beaten his last three opponents with face lock neck crank submissions. A nasty little man is Shinya Aoki, the former policeman. Kitaoka bounding around in the ring, refusing to make eye contact with Aoki. He was the atmosphere here, you can cut it with an electric toothbrush in his awesome hands. And Kitaoka was, was staring bullets at uh, Aoki at the, uh, at the second fighter intro there earlier today, too. I mean, like you said, there's just a lot of, a lot of emotion going into this fight. Kitaoka said yesterday, Aoki will not leave the ring unscathed. The elder, Kitaoka by three years. Aoki all over him in height. 5'11 versus 5'6, both men at 154.3. I'm excited for this one, Mike. Kitaoka is nuts. He I am legitimately crazy. He is... Some, he is nuts. I mean, in a good way, but he's nuts. There's something wrong with him. Crazy eyes. Psycho eyes. Kitaoka did not stand still during that national anthem, continually flexing his jaw, flexing his neck, rolling his shoulders, and then he started to stare across the ring at Aoki. He was doing that the whole time Aoki was entering the ring. He's been doing that since he really started walking down the ring. Just, he's got like a pre-fight anxiety disorder, or he's psyching himself up, or I don't know what he's doing, but it's pretty cool, actually. It's pretty rare yeah, to see Aoki. him in one place, for sure. Once again, held camp at Evolve MMA in Singapore in preparation for this fight. Shanti Sitchatong and other Muay Thai champions in his corner. He's been working on his striking, Aoki. But let's see what happens if push comes to shove in this championship match. Five rounds as former friends become arch enemies in the ring tonight. Yeah, I think Kitaoka is actually taking this a lot harder than Aoki. Before Aoki, you know, really kind of accepted it as, hey, this is business only. He was the first one to take the fight. Um, and he's okay with it, you know, and he came in, business as usual, bowed to Kitaoka. Kitaoka did not even respond, as if, like, forget it. This is, you know, we're just gonna, somebody's gonna die in this ring today. I mean, not literally, but... 
And just have a look at the differences between them here. Aoki standing in his corner, now staring down Kitaoka, but Kitaoka all the time, shuffling his shoulders, bouncing up and down the balls of his feet. He's the first one to center in here, staring at Aoki, trash talking to Aoki. Look at this. Unified rules, no kicks to a downed opponent. Knees are allowed, no elbows to the head. Five five-minute rounds. Kitaoka's crazy eyes have not left Aoki. Kitaoka bounding off the ropes. He cannot stand still. Aoki a little calmer here. Michael Chevello, Mike Kogan, Hans Thompson with you. Both men in southpaw stance to open up here. High right round from Aoki. Aoki's got to use his reach if he wants to stay in a stand-up position. Locks on a Muay Thai, clinch at a high knee. Shoots down early, does Aoki, going for a double leg. There's a very tight guillotine there. I mean, he's got a tight guillotine, but Aoki is able to, as long as he's able to, you know, get across the side, I think he's going to be, you know, he's going to be okay. He's, he's relieving the pressure, actually, by uh, by putting shoulder pressure into Kitaoka. I think, if anything, Kitaoka is just burning himself out more, his forearm, I mean, you know, than, than actually going to do any damage to Aoki. And Aoki pops out now, takes the back of Kitaoka. This is not where Satoru Kitaoka wants to be. With Aoki riding your back. We know how easily Aoki can choke a man. Wrapping those rubber legs around. Going for a triangle, actually. Can he sit it up? It's close now. Those bob sleds of feet getting that footwork behind the knee to secure the triangle here on Kitaoka. Very early into the first round. Yeah, he's securing it. damn near six foot lightweight. He's getting a triangle, but he's also uh, he's also trying to go for the arm lock. And Kitoka is actually defending the arm lock more so than the, the triangle. See, he's trying to keep make sure he keeps his arms together. That's what he was trying to uh, defend. It's trouble now for Kitaoka. No, he turned his elbow. He turned his elbow. His thumb is looking downwards. He's, he's okay. And now he's out. Kitaoka free receives a round of applause. I wonder whose group side the crowd is on. You know, as we said earlier, Mike, we just you know end up really seeing a high-level grappling match here between the two, uh, you know, two masters of, of grappling, um, and that's ultimately what this fight's coming going to come down to, and that's what we're looking at the first two minutes. Kitaoka. You know, Oki's okay, been working that Muay Thai so much. I wondered if he would come out and try to try to use that more, but he definitely has tried to make this into a grappling match. Yeah, I mean, as I said, in the corner now, Aoki. Hooking up the leg of Kitaoka, triangling that right leg of Kitaoka. And the crazy koala, very calm in his corner. This is where he wants to be. Plenty of instructions coming his way. Meanwhile, they're quiet in the corner of Aoki. Confident, their man is doing everything right so far. Can he lock on a Muay Thai clinch from here? Not while Kitaoka is driving the hips in like that. Aoki looks for a takedown, and they go to canvas. Kitaoka looking to sit up now in the blue corner. His corner tell him to stand up here. And he does, rides up the turnbuckle. Nice work from Kitaoka. He's motioning here to the referee. Not quite sure what about that. And the referee gives him a slap and a tickle and separates them. Just some of the taping, it looks like, on the inside of the left glove of Kitaoka coming loose. Aoki in center in, Kitaoka on his bike. Circling into that lead hand of Aoki. I tell you what though, Kitaoka for a little guy, Mike, is built. Kitaoka is my hero. This guy is crazy. He's built like a freight train. He's got psycho eyes 24 7. He's not even trying to look psycho. He just looks psycho. And he's he's just cool. I, 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 like I said, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Kitaoka. Oh, Aoki clinches up with him. Hooks the leg, gets the takedown. Nice work from Shinya Aoki. Can he get the mount? No, put in half guard here. One minute 20 remaining. First round set for five. Kitaoka using his big springs here at the arena to engage his position. What does Aoki do from here, Mike? Well, Aoki is very patient. I mean, first, you know, he's trying to, he's going to try to secure his position, and then, he's, you know, he slowly starts to move in for, uh, for a submission. I think he really wants to try and submit Kitaoka. I think just sitting there, and you know, he could be throwing rabbit punches right now and just basically ride out the rest of this round uh, and earn some points. But I think he really wants to make a point. 
short popping. Let's have that from Aoki. Still inside a half guard here. Well, Hanifis tries to the hairline from the champion. Aoki, as we said earlier, on a six-fight winning streak coming in here tonight. Oh, on the right chin. arm. Aoki came in as a favorite, minus 525. Kitsuoka plus 325. Kitsuoka doing a good job here, Mike, of locking up that right arm. Now it gets free, and Aoki uses it. Yeah, Kitsuoka did a really good job at neutralizing him. Aoki was being a little dirty there, trying to use his chin to actually pin Kitsuoka's face in play. That's what his corner told him to do, too. Well, I know, but I mean, you know. I'm a grappler. That's a dirty technique. Yeah, I would yeah, definitely yeah, not do it to a friend, even if we are in an MMA fight together. Well, he, he cranked on that arm with bad intentions, too, which... <laughs> well, you know, it's one thing to go for an actual submission. I mean, I can't, you know, you can't fault the guy for trying to finish the fight with a submission, but it's a different thing to go for dirty techniques like chin pushes into the face. And Double leg there from Aoki getting a takedown. Here's the triangle attempt from Aoki that momentarily had Kitaoka in a spot of bother. But nothing that the crazy koala couldn't handle. First round down of our co-main event, the championship on the line. Aoki, the defending champion, the challenger, one of his closest friends, Satoru Kitaoka. You know what I, what I find more upsetting, so to speak, than these two fighting is the fact that Yuki Nakai has chosen to be in Aoki's corner as an active participant. I was very I would, surprised by that, I yeah. would think that, you know, if, if these both are your students and they have to fight because it's business, what, what is it a business of yours? We are ready to roll. Second round of fun. Again, Kitaoki comes to centering first. Both men and the southpaw fights with a leg kick to Aoki. Body clinch, backs him into the corner, gets a takedown with ease. Nice couple of takedowns for Aoki so far in this fight in half guard. Very early in this round. Aoki back to his feet here. And that punch there from Kitaoka. Aoki still in half guard. You know, a lot of people don't realize Aoki has a very good judo background. Yoki, black belt in judo, black belt in BJJ under Yuki Nakai. Controlling the right wrist here of Kitaoka. Still in half guard, top position, Shinya Yoki. A man who has had mixed success at New Year's Eve's events. Last year, of course, being knocked out in a mixed rules event with Jinotsu the year before that. A horrific arm break that he put on Hirota in that Dream versus SRC series. A common opponent, incidentally, that beat the absolute hell out of Kitaoka. Upkick from Kitaoka. And again from the crazy koala. But Aoki is showing that trademark patience, always thinking, always strategizing. Kitaoka again glancing at the big screen. The view, if you were a bird, posting up on that left arm here is Aoki. What are the options for Kitaoka from here, Mike? Well, I mean, Kitaoka is doing about all he can do here. Uh, you know, Aoki is very, very patient. He's not. He's trying to maintain the position. The position to him is more important than than advancing or going for a submission. So, you know, Kitaoka is doing about all he can do. He's moving his hips. Uh, you know, he's trying to elevate Aoki. But, you know, I mean, this is Shinya Aoki on top of you. Not taking away anything from Kitaoka's grappling abilities. I mean, there's not much more he can do. Trying to get that right arm free here, Aoki. Kitaoka just closing down the Tobikan Judan here in the second round. Not a lot of activity. Aoki consistently searching, trying to find an opening where he can work a submission. As we said, his last three opponents, he's defeated with a face lock neck crank submission. Silence here at the Saitama Super Arena. The Japanese have such a high appreciation for skillful mixed martial arts, particularly the submissions. Certainly through Shinya Aoki, they've been treated to some absolute beauties. Aoki.
Loki. She offered a rematch with Mizutu Hirota, but chose to fight Kitayoko instead, saying that Kitayoko is a better fighter and I want to fight the best. I'm sure that Hirota would have loved the chance to avenge that loss from Dynamite two years ago, where Aoki broke his arm. It's still so hard to watch footage of that fight. All wrapped up like a ball of twine here, with one minute 35 remaining for the second round. A lot of instructions here, hands in the corner of Aoki. You know, they're both they're both getting a lot of instructions from the corner, and it's interesting because they're, they're you know, obviously know each other very well, but the corners are also playing off of it and saying, you know, he's saying, dive underneath him, and then the, the other corner will say, hey, don't let him dive underneath you. So they're, they're clearly listening to the other corner here, too. Chants go up in a section of the audience now for Shinya Aoki. Trying to work an elbow there, and the referee finally stands them up. Could have come a little earlier. Let's see what Kitaoka can get off here now in his strikes. Aoki has the huge advantages, of course, especially in that length. Length of his legs, length of his arms. Kitaoka's only hope, really, is to get on the inside and try and get some shots off of the body, tuck one under the chin. Aoki very relaxed here. Good shin across the midsection. As Peter Ertz comes and laughs at my makeup. Still have on. Oh, nice round kick again from Aoki. And he gets a takedown. Solid work from the champion. Posting up on both arms. Nice little palm heel strike there from Aoki. 11 seconds left in the round. It will be Shinya Aoki's round. He will go ahead two rounds to zip in this championship fight. I don't think so. I think the first round goes to Kitaoka here. I think I have Aoki ahead at the moment. It's up. I don't. I don't think Aoki has actually done anything of any significance in this fight, other than take well, Kitaoka down, Kitaoka stay in his guard, and do nothing. Well, Kitaoka, Kitaoka at done? least tried for a guillotine. Okay. Kitsuyaka tried for guillotine. At least Aoki has landed some strikes standing and gotten takedowns. Yeah, but the desire to finish the fight, that's not a desire to finish the fight when you throw a lazy he jab. He has one desire. That's one more desire than Aoki had. Well, how about Aoki in the first round over towards the blue corner when he had the triangle on him? That's a desire to finish a okay, fight. Okay, there you go. So, so he cancels out yeah, your no desire, yeah, yeah. and Aoki's up. Well, I don't know if he's up, but I would say they were even. I forgot about the armbar thing. the strikes Aoki was landing there in the second round, though, Mike. If they cancel each other out for trying to finish a fight, then I think Aoki has a head. But it's good to debate these things. Hans, how do you feel? Uh, well, Matt Hume is, is gesturing at us over here and trying to let us know, you know, that, that the fight is scored as a whole. But I would say on the whole, it's a fairly even fight, maybe we, edged We Aoki. understand that it's scored as a whole, but for our purposes, we do like to score it <laughs> round by round. Therefore, at the moment, I think Aoki's ahead. I, I'd, I'd have to side with you, Michael. I'm not deciding. Oh, a good round kick again there from Aoki. Transitions to a tie, clinch cut, munching knee. Puts on a knee guard here to Skutaoka. And Aoki looks to trip out the support leg. He's still not a great strike, Aoki, but he's learned a couple of things. Aoki to erase the embarrassment of last year's loss to Giannotsu. Up kicks here from Kitaoka. Takes the back to Zayoki. That was slick. Okay, this now that's dangerous. getting a little dangerous. And this is early in the round, Mike. He's got the body triangle on. Yeah, this is this is not definitely not a position that Kitaoka wants to be in. A lot I'm, of sure, time. I'm sure he's been there plenty in training, but this is probably not where you want to be. And Aoki will just take his time here. Methodical, systematic, calculating, nasty. One hook in there on the right leg. Kitaoka trying to gauge his position by glancing at the screen, but it's a little awkwardly positioned over his right shoulder to get a good look. And Aoki knows he's got time here. He doesn't have to rush anything, Mike. No, not at all. I mean, he's got a very dominant position. You know, even though he's, uh, he's unhooked the second hook, he's... He's still got it triangled, and, and actually his knee is holding the hip down, so Kitaoka is, is still in full control. And I think he's trying to set up if he has a chance to go for uh, 
an Eddie Bravo choke or whatever that thing is called. The, the twister. The twister. Um, Oh, a yogi, nice heel kick on the abdomen and again. It's Aoka trying to prevent that arm. Just a moment's rest there for Kitaoka as he re-strategizes. Now, to his credit, Kitaoka is doing a pretty good job at wrist fighting. I mean, basically, at this point in MMA, because of the gloves, you know, it's kind of hard to get under. So it all becomes really about wrist fighting. It's just a lot of wrist fighting going on and see, you know, who can, who can really capitalize on it. Aoki is second to none at, at getting his way. Um, that like could I be said, one of the reasons he goes to that face lock a lot, too, because it's tougher to get that hand in the chin, like you said. Oh, yeah. Gets the body triangle locked on again here. Can he look for a finish now, Shinya Aoki? No, it's Aoki still defending. That body triangle, though, will take its toll on Kitaoka. Makes it very hard to breathe. Really wear him down. Still plenty of time here in the third round. Two minutes, 14 remaining. Opens up the legs again here, does Aoki. We'll try and sink those hooks in. It's Aoka looking for a right hand. Couldn't work the angle. Oh, Aoki throws the legs up now. And Kitaoka gets up a right hand. Will he back up? Or will he engage on the ground here with Aoki? He can't leave the arm out. Oh, Aoki, nice up kick between the eyes. It's huge lead of Aoki. Kitaoka wants in. He wants to land. And the referee says, let's get up. So Aoki a little slow to return to his feet here. Also some taping on his gloves coming a little loose. Now, I don't know if it's Kitaoka being Kitaoka, Mike, or if he's generally breathing heavily through his mouth. He's got those funny moves he sometimes does. With yeah, I don't know. I mean, like I said, you know, he does that just from ring entrance, so he might just have some kind of ring anxiety, performance anxiety disorder that, you know, I don't know. High right round kick from Kitaoka. Aoki shoots in, wants him down. The ropes are in the way at the moment. Double leg here from Aoki. Kitaoka content to just sit on that middle rope. Under a minute remaining here in the third. The lightweight championship on the line. And the referee breaks them. Aoki resets. There's blood coming from the nose. Looks like the left nostril of Kitaoka. Kick from Aoki. That was nicely done. High knee. Right hand drops down for a single. Good combination from Aoki. And he transitions to a single leg. Now, can he get Kitaoka down in front of Aoki's corner? This would be exactly where he wants him, Mike. I mean, he hasn't had any problems taking Kitaoka down throughout this entire fight. We're almost at the end of the third round here, so I don't think Kitaoka is resisting too much in going to the ground. Kitaoka overextended with that punch. Aoki capitalizing here, takes the back, tries to scalp him with the knee. Into the third. Three down, two remaining. How do you see it, Mike? Well, I, have to, I, I definitely have to give an edge, edge to... Uh, uh, Aoki definitely in this round. I mean, for sure, this round, there's no way for him to have lost it. I mean, he's taken the back. He's obviously shown the the desire to uh, uh, finish the fight by all standards. Um, so if I had to guess, maybe two rounds to one. I would, I would have to say it's like two rounds to one. You know, if you go through the criteria the judges are using, then let's have a look at it. If it's a KO or force a submission, Aoki so far. Damage, Aoki winning. Striking combos definitely and ground Aoki. control, yeah, Aoki. Aoki. Takedown and takedown defense, Aoki. Aggressiveness, Aoki. Aoki. And deductions, there have been no deductions so far. Yeah, well, by these so criteria, six he's six criteria. Three yeah, he's three rounds to know. Yeah. Folks, wherever you're watching live on HDNet, we hope you're enjoying all the action for New Year's Eve here at the St. Thomas Super Arena, where Kitaoka is the first to emerge from his stall. Let's see if the crazy koala, the crazy eyes, can pick up the pace here. High right round from Kitaoka. I just don't think he's got the height to pull off a round kick to the head of Aoki. Again, he goes 
Jones high. I wonder if the corner of Tol Kijau could go for a head kick. Maybe they've seen a chink in the armor of Aoki. I personally don't see it. Curling right hand from Kitaoka. Aoki Muay Thai clinch. Oh, he caught him sweetly. Right under the eye. Aoki doing damage with the knees. Beautiful work from Aoki. Now in the mount position. Only 40 seconds into the round. Kitaoka in a world of bother now. Aoki loves this position. And he's going to hammer away at the bloody face of Kitaoka. Yeah, this is, this is not a good position for Kitaoka to be in. And obviously, you know, this is how he spent the better part of the third round. So, look at that blood smeared over the top lip. He looks like a circus clown. Well, the blood is actually coming from his nose. And it's just a sweat, it's, you know, he's making it look a lot worse than what it is. But, then, but it's also making it difficult for him to breathe. Let's say you can hear him breathing really heavy here, probably because he can't breathe through his nose right now. And Aoki just going to take his time. Here and we there go. It is. Can Aoki find the finish now? Is it over for Kitaoka? Aoki squeezing. No, it's not there yet. Oh my no. God, it sounds like he's choking on blood. <sighs> You can hear the gurgling there. That was Kitaoka. Yeah, but I don't think that was from the choke. I think it's just from blood. Yeah, blood streaming CPU from his nose. Back of his throat. Into the back of his throat. And Aoki's going to reset here. Three minutes remaining in the penultimate round. And Aoki's going to try and sink the choke again. At the moment, risk control. Kitaoka is defending. Aoki with a body triangle, and he tries for it once more. Ah, uh, this one is deep. Will he send Kitaoka to sleep? This one is really deep, but Kitaoka is being able to defend it so far, but this one is deep. This Referee one is deep. looking closely. Kitaoka in trouble. Aoki with a body triangle, and still a lot wow. of time to finish. But Kitaoka defends. Wow, he really did not want to get submitted by that, but that was, that was pretty deep. The crowd applauds the resilience of Kitaoka. See, Aoki is switching now to a modified rear naked choke where you don't interlock your arms because Kitaoka is able to unlock his arms even after he fully locks them. So he's trying to just clench his wrists. You hear that breathing again of Kitaoka. Caught in the web of Aoki's legs. Body triangle. Now Aoki takes the back. If he flattens him out here, it could be all over. Kitaoka still resilient. Will not go quietly into the night, Kitaoka. But will he have to wave the white flag soon? One minute 41 remains, fourth of five. Risk control again. So important here for Kitaoka to have control of Aoki's wrist. He's got two hands clasping the right wrist at the moment. Okay, Aoki gets an arm under the chin. Kitaoka just writhing around in his own blood there. And Aoki is so patient. Will he try and lock on the body triangle here? It's in the game. It's like a horror movie. This will be an amazing survival story if Kitaoka can get out of this round. He's glancing up at the giant screen here. He's trying to figure out what to do. As Aoki now triangles the left leg. What can Kitaoka do from here, Mike? Well, I mean, Kitaoka can try, try to turn into him. You know, he's doing a good job at wrist control. Uh, he's doing a good job at fighting that off. Referee, a close eye on proceedings. Is Kitaoka finished? Is Kitaoka finished? Oh, yeah. 20 oh. seconds on the clock. Choke attempt after choke attempt, but still Kitaoka fighting. sickening i mean i it, you know it sounds like a dying man i mean i don't know it, it didn't sound very good that being said 
Call me crazy, but I think Aoki is starting to take a little pity on Kitoka. Despite the, despite the choke attempts, he had plenty of time to finish him. He had, he had opportunities to switch and, and refinish him and be a lot faster to him. I don't know. I think maybe that breathing kind of got Aoki thinking that, you know, this guy's you almost know, done. I don't need to really finish him off, finish him off. Hans, you know Aoki well. Is that in his character to, you know, ease up here on Kitaoka, given the friendship between the two? Or is Aoki the kind of guy that'll just go and finish no matter what? I mean, given the, the way that he's broken people's limbs off before, and it, I think he's honestly trying to, to finish him here that Kitaoka just does not want to give up to him and, and will not tap. I think a lot of guys probably would have just, you know, accepted their fate by this point. And then if Aoki could have finished him, I think he would have done. And it is time for the fifth. Kitaoka is still here, despite the odds, despite the submission attempts. Fifth and final round. And Kitaoka opens up strongly, trying to strike and surprise Aoki. Kitaoka's going to turn it into a brawl now. Overhand left by the crazy koala. Gets out of the tie clinch. What a moment it would be, Mike, if he could connect and knock out Aoki here in the final round. He's having none of that touch and glove stuff. I'm sorry? He was having none of that touch and glove no, stuff. No, he's obviously very emotional at this point. I mean, you know, this is the final round. He's Obviously, this fight is not going his way by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and, I, you know, I think it's more of a frustration, really, at this point. Uh, because he really did take this fight so personally as opposed to Aoki who seemed to be a lot more nonchalant about it. Well, to the corner here of Aoki in front of our commentary position. Inside half guard here, Aoki. In the mount. It's Aoki. Is that all he had? The opening flurry, side control now and transitions to take the back Aoki he's doing it easily here you've got to wonder what Satoru Kitaoka has left he's got left a lot of hearts <laughs> that heavy breathing again of Kitaoka of your ex-girlfriends oh, that sound Mike <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that sound is scary I mean it's, it it's chilling it's like listen to this it's like a fish out of water yeah it's like a guy really gasping yeah. for like breath of air but like you know the life ending type I'm thinking he may have broken his nose and again the body triangle here from Aoki what does Kitaoka do from this position, Mike? What are his options here? Well, I mean, his options are literally to do what he did the, f the first time when he had the energy, and that was he, to uh, wrist fight, get freed up a little bit, and then turn into him. It's basically what he's doing, what he was trying to do right there. He's turned into him, you know, hold one of the legs, and then basically just turning it back into the guard. But, you know, that's easier said than done against somebody like Aoki. Aoki has been working for this submission since the opening round. It hasn't come for him yet. Will he finish here in the fifth and final? Body triangle again from Aoki. It has been all one-way traffic, I feel, since the first round. Yeah, it's been basically all defense on Kitaoka's part. Now, that being said, you know, Shinya Oki has finished formidable grapplers in, in under one round or within two rounds. Be here in the fifth round with Aoki on your back. Aoki's now trying to switch for... That's basically what he needs to do. It's what he just did here. You know, he finally got enough uh, energy, I guess, to be able to do that. To slip away, slip away, put his hips out, put his back on the ground and stand up. Kitaoka standing with the back now of Aoki. What can the crazy koala do from here? He tries for a right hand, but Aoki ties him up, pulls him in close. Some good Muay Thai defense there from Aoki. And Kitaoka puts on a knee guard. Aoki drops down his body weight. Takedown gets at Aoki. Kitaoka, just a momentary look of defeat on his face. 
thinking to himself, maybe I did not want to be here. One minute five remaining. He butt scoots back against the ropes. I have to say, if Patilgo makes it to the bell here, it's a moral victory given, I mean, he spent like nine minutes with Aoki on his back with choke sunk very, very deep. And Aoki back to his feet. Let's see if Kitayoka has one final flurry. Can he find a shot? Can he find a Hail Mary shot to the jaw of Aoki? Kitayoka walks into a front kick. Nice stiff jab from Aoki. And again, Aoki dancing. Aoki moving. Kitayoka forced to walk him down. Those crazy eyes haven't blinked for three minutes. Looping right hand from Kitayoka. The little man going after Aoki, but to no avail. Knees now from Kitayoka. Oh, Can nice he open knees. up a cut? Aoki trying to stop the knees, and here they come again between the eyes. He said Aoki would not leave unscathed. Now Kitayoka causing damage, but that's it. That's the end, and Aoki will take it. Yeah, no hugging, no, hey, buddy, you know, sorry, I had to do it. Hope we can be friends again. So, pretty safe to say, you know, Aoki is off of uh, Kitaoka's Christmas list for the holidays. Aoka never wanted this fight. Was shocked when Aoki fingered him as an opponent and said, I want you. Well, it's now in the history books. Aoki takes it. on the feet, defended the choke time and time again, but from the opening bell to the close, it was Aoki in control. Did you expect more from Kitaoka, Mike? You know, I, I, I did. I expected a little more offense uh, or, you know, a little more scrambles, a little more than just, just being there and defending it. But, you know, then again, I mean, I don't have Aoki on my back, so it's easy for me to expect things. Kitaoka being applauded here as he heads backstage as well he should be. And Sasahara san presents the championship to the man who I'm sure is among his favorite fighters on the dream roster, Shinya Aoki. Now you've got to pay credit to Kitaoka for defending all those submission attempts. Usually Aoki finishes opponents and you heard the gurgling in the throat. As Hans said, the nose very well may have been broken. The blood running into the back of the throat on Kitaoka. A lesser man with a smaller set of nards would have submitted long ago to Shinya Aoki, but not Satoru Kitaoka. to have a few words. It's, it's, uh, after a little bit of time, I'll, I'll uh, talk I'll talk more at length here. After I thank my coaches. He wants us to say 3, 2, 1, evolve. Three, two, one, evolve. Yeah, it didn't really 
to get the response he was after. As the Bucker Survivor leaves the ring with his championship belt intact, the lights are about to dim in a moment as we prepare for our main event. The last emperor, Fedor Emelianenko, returns to Japan, where he made his name to take on Olympic judo gold medalist Satoshi Ishii.
17th and final match. Satoshi Ishii, a fifth degree black belt in judo, a gold medalist at the 2008 Beijing Olympics in the over 100 kilograms division. Four one on one mixed martial arts record with wins over Minua Man, Katsuyori Shibata, and Jerome Labana. A draw with Paulio Filio, the only loss to Hidehiko Yoshida. That was in his debut fight. He's trained with some big names around the world, including American top team, Extreme Couture, Robert Drysdale, and Lyoto Mashida. He's from a family of athletes. His parents are physical education teachers who competed in high-level judo and handball. His sister was on a national championship water polo team. at Black House and Rain Training Centre, both in Los Angeles. He turned 25 just two weeks ago. A chance here for Satoshi Ishii to make a true name for himself in what has not been the most highly impressive of mixed martial arts careers so far. looks into a million oh, Enko's eyes for the first time in the ring. goes to Fedor, Satoshi Ishii giving up huge experience. Our main event, under unified rules, no kicks to a grounded opponent, knees are allowed, no elbows to the head. Three five-minute rounds. Both men touch gloves. You've got to wonder, what does Satoshi Ishii have in his bag of tricks? We know that Fedor 
is capable of everything and anything. Michael Chabello, Mike Kogan, Hans Thompson with you. Satoshi Ishii, Southpaw starts, goes early to the draw of Fedor. Fedor has always been a tremendously quick heavyweight, always been a very good striker. And look how high the guard is here of Satoshi Ishii. He knows he can't leave his chin propped in the air, or Fedor will come over the top of that right hand. Inside leg kick from Fedor. Good left hand from Ishii, just needed to turn through a little more. Because Fedor isn't tucking his chin. Catches the kick in leg, does Ichi. No chance to sweep up the support leg. They lock up for the first time. And Fedor throws it into the midsection. Ishi covers up as he returns to his feet. Good exchange early on in the opening. 55 seconds. Yeah, I mean, a great exchange so far. And actually very impressive that Fedor never let Ishi settle in with his initial leg uh, takedown attempt and, uh, you know, was able to neutralize it. I mean, obviously Ishii's best bet is to put Fedor on his back. Nice work from Fedor, keeping the lead foot on the outside of Ishii's lead foot. Throwing the right hand down the tube. That's what you've got to do against a southpaw. But Ishii looks focused. Not too many juniors here in the biggest fight of his young career. Nice right hand lead there from Fedor. He knows to throw it all night long. Inside leg kick from Satoshi Ishii. Look at that femoral. Fedor relaxed, composed. Right hand lead. Final shot to the body off the left. Good combination work from Fedor. Ishii needs to pull the trigger here. He tried it off the bell, going to Fedor's jaw. At the moment, just covering up. None of these hands are landing cleanly for Fedor, but he has the work rate. Ishii tries to thread the left hand. He thought about a hook. He turned it into an overhand. And Fedor quickly got off his knees. Two minutes, 45 remaining. First round, set for three. Oh, straight right. Straight right down the tube from Fedor. Ishii blinking heavy on the left eye. Fedor's right hand a treat so far. Ishii trying to measure with his right, and again, Fedor drops it! The big Kabasha scoops down Hold on, wait a minute, let me put some Fedor in it! Well, you know, as we said, as I said at the beginning of the, of the show, Fedor did exactly what he needed to do to show everybody that he's, you know, the dominant one. And let's finish Ishii early and finish Ishii decisively. He finished him in two and a half minutes, with a brutal knockout, you couldn't have asked for more. You know, Fedor is Fedor. Mike, we always say it, but this is how textbook Fedor is. There are three golden rules to fighting a southpaw. Number one, get your lead foot on the outside of their lead foot. Check it off for Fedor. Number two, counter their left hand. Check it off for Fedor. Number three, and most importantly, throw the right hand as much as you can. That's what knocked out is you. Absolutely, and I mean, Fedor actually threw the right hand early on, and it, that's what got Ishii to really start to notice his punching power. He was very timid after that in the exchanges. And Mike, Ishii is still laid out on the canvas here. He has only just come to. Great sportsmanship from Fedor going over to his fallen opponent, but it's taking Ishii a long time to recover here. Well, Mike, I mean, Fedor was so confident that Ishii is not going to get up that after knocking him down, he didn't even follow up. He literally just stood back like this guy is not going to get up anymore. And like I said, you know, a very dominant performance from Fedor, exactly what we expected. But in a very, uh, he, he finished it fast and he finished it decisively. That's exactly, that's the only thing he could have done in this fight to come out a true winner. They are still pending. It looks like the nose has been broken. Skewing blood there of Satoshi Ishii. Antonio Inoki in the ring. What a moment here for Fedor Emelianenko. Back-to-back -back wins now over Jeff Monson in Moscow. And here tonight, 30 seconds before the New Year, guys, 10. Right on the buzzer. Boys, wow. it has been an awesome 2011. Forget what the Mayans said. 2012. Hey, happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Hey, my wife, Ivy, is wow. watching. My 
kids are watching. I want to wish them all Happy New Year. I want to wish Happy New Year to all the friends and, and all the fans that have stayed up for the last nine hours watching this. Happy New Year, guys. Well, at least from Japan. I want to say Happy New Year to my wife and to uh, my buddy Michael Kagiwata who was asking for a shout-out and everybody else that's listening. And Happy New Year to my fiance Irene. We're getting married in 2012. I can't wait. And tonight belongs to Fedor Emelianenko. Mike, this is what it's all about. You couldn't have scripted it better. You couldn't have timed it better. New Year's Eve once again belongs to the last emperor. Absolutely. And I mean, it's, you know, it's good to see him back in a winning streak. I mean, he won against Munson. He's now destroyed uh, Ishii. Most of us expected him to do it. You know, Fedor lost three fights in a row after a 10-year undefeated decorated career taking on all comers. What more can you ask for? Have a look at this. Right hand by Fedor. And Ishii was planted like a tree. Look at Fedor, the right hand, the trigger ready to go. Lead foot on the outside of Ishii's lead foot, boom, down the tube, nose shattered. That first right hand dead straight on target. Actually, the second right hand landed right behind the ear. It spin the new knockout spot for a lot, a lot of the guys. Has indeed. Mo knocked out Gracie that way in, in his fight, uh, you know, in September. And it's just been going on ever since. But that's, that's actually what really knocked him down. And look at the nose. It is definitely broken. The nose on Satoshi issue is absolutely wrecked. And Fedor did it without raising a sweat. Ishii came out game in the opening seconds, went after the jawline of Fedor. It seemed like a good idea, but he could not follow through. Wow, Ishii. He took a big set to step up against Fedor with so little experience. Coming into this, Fedor was the favorite, minus 555, Ishii at plus 355. What a way to cap off an amazing, amazing night here. Peter Ertz is pulling faces at my makeup, Mike. There's nothing I can do about it. What are you going to do gonna about take it? it? What are you going to do about it? I, I don't just think you should take that it. from him, Michael. What, what I think you should take you do it about it? For? Without Ray Seppo here to defend me, there ain't much I can do. No, there isn't <laughs> much you can do. <laughs> Peter's holding my hand now. Have a look at this again. Right hand by Fedor, cracks the nose. The second one was just icing on the cake. There it is. Straight down the tube. Beautiful. Just beautiful. You can watch it over and over again in his textbook. The shot behind the ear at the end. The icing on the cake. And look at that. Ishii was astral traveling. Fedor Emelianenko came in one and three in his last four. Two and three now in his last five. Back to back wins. It's been a long time since he's achieved that, Hans. It has, you know, but it, it definitely makes you, makes you wonder if he has lost that step or if, you know, he just hit a, hit a setback that everybody hits in their career at some point. It took him 10 years to get there. I think what Fedor has shown us in the past, we have to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he might have some left in the tank. There are still a lot of questions to answer about Fedor Emelianenko. After beating Monson, after beating Satoshi Ishii, there's still questions as to how high up he can still attain a level at this stage in his career, Mike. Because Monson, Ishii aren't the A-grade guys. No, but is it really a question? I mean, can we really sit here and question a guy who went on a 10-year undefeated streak, defeating Mirko Krokop at his best, defeating Nogueira at his best, you know, and, and dominating the heavyweight Grand Prix, becoming the pride heavyweight champion at the time when all the best fighters were in pride. After 10 years of, of, of giving us undefeated fights, I mean, can we really question him? Does he really, is there anything really more he needs to prove? Nah, I think not. What a great night at St. Thomas Super Arena. Everybody is celebrating, folks. We hope you've enjoyed it. New Year's 
supreme once again here in Tokyo. It has been our absolute pleasure to bring it to you live on HDNet. You've been watching Dream New Year's 2011 on HDNet. Our executive producer of HDNet is Daryl Lee Waltz. Remote Engineering, Jeff Carmen. Graphics by Mike Boyd. Replays, Josh Harper. Thanks to all the great staff in Denver at our broadcast center for spending the night with us. Manager of Marketing Alliances, Adam Swift. CEO of h &E Fights, Andrew Simon. For my broadcast partner, Mike Kogan and Hans Thompson. So long from Tokyo and a happy new year.